All police! Come to the door. You come to no harm. Shots fired. Crime never sleeps. Taser, I think. But neither... Stand still. ...do the cops. <laughs> Battling on the front line... Taser! Taser! ...are Nottinghamshire's finest. Stop after impact. Highly trained pursuit drivers... <laughs> ...specialists in entry... <laughs> Search. Four ounces of cannabis. Rapid response firearms officers. On police! Show yourself now! Police for the dog stop stop! And the crime stopping force ah, look at my arm. Ah. of the dog unit. Ah. Get down on the floor! Ah. Wherever the battle takes them, they'll never back down. Ah. Because come at the hour. Yeah, Bass, we've still got him. Up at the back wheel, off side of the road. Doing, 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 doing. At the interceptors. Where are you from? Leeds. Leeds. Don't come to Nottingham again, will you? Coming up. Decamp, decamp, decamp. A firearms manhunt. The thing is, he's going to be in these gardens somewhere. We'll get around the other side then. Man's worst enemy. What? 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 And. Please. Making an entrance Please. interceptor style. Please! Please. 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 Not Interceptors boast 22 highly trained police dogs who specialise in finding drugs and cash, <laughs> tracking runaways, Track up. and scaring the bejesus out of bad guys. Get the dog off me! Okay. Ah. Stand still. The dog units also play their part in drug busts, and today, Jen Else and Police Dog Quantum are back up... Yeah, ...for a heavyweight entry team... Go, 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 go. ...who are raiding a former pub in the Burbs. <laughs> they have intel that it's a drug den with five suspects inside. Surprise is key, so they force entry with a hooli bar. <laughs> and then, Please! Please! Please, don't move! Enforcer! 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 The enforcer is a big red key that batters doors. This one's had an upgrade. Please. And works a treat. Hand behind your back. What's the problem? What's the problem? Hand behind your back now. Huh? Two men are nicked in the first room. Right, next to Who's got the next door? Open up! But the pub's a warren of hiding places. Every door's locked. Briefly. You got who you got? Yeah, cheers. Three suspects nicked. But there should be two more in this maze of locked doors. Downstairs now. Oh, this is the pub bit. No time for a pint. Because every second increases the chances of someone escaping. No. And every locked door slows the cops down. Out! Out now! Pass me hands! The pub served up another suspect. Well, oh, young man, like this. Alright, how about you? I know you have, but why are you doing it like this? Why are you working me up? Because Intel says a major drug op is being run from this pub. Can you just keep hold of him, just so I'm not... You've done a murder or something. I'm not saying you're a murder, but at the minute you're detained, well, that's all. Well, you don't stop you're you're again, yeah? Can I have a few more? Yeah, we'll do it, my horns yeah, back. Right. One suspect named in the intel is still unaccounted for. Police officer, tase and you can't make yourself known now! 
Just the ghosts of barflies in the saloon. Toilet's been done, yeah? But he could be lurking in the beer cellar. Ready. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, cobwebs, cobwebs, cobwebs. Oh, God. Now worse than cobwebs. Oh, God. But still no sign of suspect number five. But the pub is being watched by drone. I'll watch the windows because it's likely to come out the windows, isn't it? And by Jen and Quantum. There's a door, three windows. But while they scour the east side, the eagle-eyed drone operator spots the missing suspect making a break for it from the west. <laughs> he fence jumps into an adjacent property and legs it down an alleyway, pursued by two cops. Darting between houses, the runner pulls away and crosses the main road. He's too quick for them. Please for the dog, stop, stop! But not for Quantum. Stop, stop, pass out! Pass out! The runner's jumped onto the roof of a parked car. They've no idea if he's carrying anything dangerous. So the land shark strikes. Down on the floor. Stop Down on the floor. <laughs> on your front oh, now. Look at my arm. Ah. You sit still. I'm done, I'm done. Look, look. Rubberneckers are dangerously close. Get over there now. Get over there. It's Jen's job to keep them safe. Stay where you are. Oh. Stay where you are. Yeah, the suspect's reaching for something. You leave it. So I'm putting back on you. Get on your front now. Oh, Get on your front now. Oh. Now. Get on your front now. Reinforcements help him get on to his front. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Turns out he was reaching for a wedge of cash that fell out of his pocket. Come on, even the way chasing me, bro. Oh, you ran. You did, just not fast enough. I've got your money here. Yeah. I was thinking. Who got him detained? He's been bitten. Why did she let the dog bite my arm like that? You ran away. I we you were told to stop. Oh, my arm bad. All together now, never run from the dog. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Five detained. You're under arrest, suspicion of uh, conspiracy, spy and money laundering. Bullshit. OK? Back at the pub, cops learn how timely their raid was. Mm. You have your metal bars putting up with us, so you're lucky. What were you doing that for? Could save security, innit? You know what I mean? Burglars around there, innit? Come in. The cops are less worried about burglars and more about drugs alleged to be at the property. Come here, Cooper. Drugs that Jen's on a mission to find with sniffer dog Cooper. Find it. What's this? What's this? Come on. Yeah, that's gross. Come here, over there. Come on. It's dirty work. It's gross. It's got flies. But someone's got to do it. Uh, uh, stinks. Cooper's sense of smell is 10,000 times stronger than ours. Ew, dead pigeon. So he deserves a medal or a tennis ball. He's, he's looking for his ball, that's what he's looking for. Yeah. He's not going to find that until he finds me something. Yeah, yeah. Sure enough. Chris, uh, the bags. Can all be. And then there's not. Quite bad look. Yeah. Wraps of white powder. Oh, nice. Cooper. Cooper. That's probably had something in it, I'm guessing. That's what he's after. Oh, yeah. Wait, let's just put the dog on it a sec. Come on, yeah. Cooper. Oops. There you go. Oh, there's something there. Idea. Come on, out. Oh. Well, this, is, this is it. This is the rack <laughs> of pure Colombian. Oh, wouldn't well, that be nice? <laughs> I don't think it is there. In this dump, it's as likely to be an old pub lunch. What is it? Stop it. 
Oh, come on. A brick of white powder. Thank you very much. That is a brilliant find. Take a bow, Cooper. Who is a good boy? Yeah, you can have him for that. He's a good lad. Yeah. He is. Oh, look at him. Oh, I'd be ripping this bedroom apart. The whole property was ripped apart, revealing quite the haul. Safes containing jewellery, two tasers and a hundred grand in cash. Two bricks of coke with a potential street value north of a hundred grand. A large bag of mamba, a further two grand in cash, a BB gun, an imitation machete and a dead pigeon. Did you get my flip top? Where is it? One of them's in the road, one of them's down that alleyway, did the runner detained by Quantum My flip -flop -flop. was found guilty of possession with intent to supply Class A and B drugs, acquiring criminal property and possession with intent to supply Mamba. He awaits sentencing and may well spend time behind bars. The girl arrested in the bedroom was charged but found not guilty at court. Meanwhile, the other three suspects were released with no further action. Coming up, Hello. Van Vandal gives Jen a headache. Absolutely, off he goes. A runaway won't give way. And a disqual driver gives a lesson in Zen. Calm down, I'm telling you, I'm calm on that. That's good out to 2 LH. It's the start of a new shift for Jen and Quantum. And there's no calm before the storm tonight. There's been some sort of altercation on the street where a plant pot's been thrown through a window, apparently. And, uh, the officer's been flagged down by his mate's been thrown through the night. Plant pots through windows, reports of a knife, most of us would run for the hills. Yeah, we've seen the uh, shows travelling. But this is just what Quantum ordered. As they reach the area, there's not much to see. Until someone legs it down the street ahead. Running man's past local cops. What's he done? What's he done? Leaving the foot chase to other units, Jen doubles back in the car. Towards the high street. What high street? What's this male done, please? Quantum could outrun him, but Jen treads carefully. I need to know what he looks like, so I can't send my dog to stop someone. They've surrounded the area. <laughs> what does he look like? Uh, show him to my 5'10". Uh, white. Sort of and have a good description of the runner. So tell me the last time you've seen him then. That's what I need to know. But they don't know if he was involved in the suspected plant pot or knife incidents. Do you stay here then? It's quantum time. A scent. And a sighting. Stop now! Stop! Stop now! Stand still now! Stand still! Running man's lost his top and he's about to lose much more. Stand still now! Quantum's favourite food is roast chicken, but he'll gladly make a meal of this pedigree chum. Still now! Right, get down! Who's begging to be bitten? Down on the floor now! Get off! Get the Down on the floor now! Get down on the floor! Playing the fool between quantum and 50,000 volts isn't the smartest. But he's surrendered in the nick of time. They think this is the guy who lobbed a flower pot through a window. Legs up to your chest. He's playing for laughs. 
But Quantum's not amused. The suspect is led off the road to protest his innocence. What do I do? Honestly, what do I do? And let his mouth off the lead. Oi! Watch your language. Stay classy, fella. Your mum must be really proud of you, eh? Go on then, doggy. Go on then. Go on then. Home. 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 Go on then. Go on then. Home. Home. Go on then. Go on then, old doggy. Home. 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 Go on then, home. Unlike Quance, this guy's bark is worse than his bite. Who are you talking to? Who used to? You be recorded, mate. You're being recorded. Yeah. And it's not a pretty picture. Keep going. You don't, you don't bother me, mate. Uh, you had too much orange ape. You had too much squash. Those playground insults really take it out of you. Come here, doggy. Come here, come here, come here. But the dog whisperer's ready for round two. <laughs> You're barking up a very dangerous tree, son just not phased by the dog, which is worrying, which means his perception and everything is, but, yeah. Prancing for quantum like a cut price Tyson Fury was the pinnacle of poor judgment. Twinkletoes is lucky he wasn't lunch. He's not really helping himself now, either. <laughs> Oscar Dodd's 2-2, two, two, eight. He's kicked off again and been restrained. What's the ETA on the van, please? We could do with this sooner rather than later. Yeah, it's received. He's just got no top on. It's freezing and he's uh, intermittently kicking off. Stop kicking out. They decide to put him in leg restraints. <laughs> Shame they can't restrain his mouth. Mate, when you let go, they're smacking your face. Oh, absolutely, off his head. Prince Charming's carriage has arrived, but he's not ready to leave the ball. One, two, three, one, two, three. He's still being violent now, you can hear him. He's kicking the back of the police van. Just literally disgusting behaviour, isn't it? To speak to me, we we're just trying to do our job at the end of the day. And this is what you get. And that's what he's doing, look, he's headbutting his... Uh... We, c we cannot allow him to basically injure him himself. I can't get involved with the dog at this point. We're going to have to try and put him in some sort of restraints. Get out, man. Get out. No. They're forced to drag him out and restrain him. Oh, oh, so you want to get out? If you get a kick he's coming out. He's got straps, come on. Listen, just chill out. Just chill out. It's not going to help, guy is angry yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. Look, just chill out. Get you sorted, all right? Thank you very much. All right. Despite the insults take some deep and threats... You're not locked in there forever. You're just going to be driving a very short way down to Radford and you'll get a nice warm cell and you'll have to sleep it off. Oh, thank you. And Jen's still looking out for him. You need to all get right. in, chill out. We'll get you a blanket, get you dry and warm, all right? All right. You listen. Chill out now. Bon voyage. See you on the other side, babes. <laughs> I'll have a warm bed for the night and probably regret it in the morning. <laughs> was not as much as if he'd been bitten, so life could be worse. No suspects were identified regarding the alleged knife incident, but the flower pot man was cautioned for criminal damage. In the sober light of day, he can reflect on how close he came to a taser's barbs or quantum's teeth. Meanwhile, St. Jen can reflect on her superhuman reserves of forgiveness. We just need to sometimes bring ourselves down a little bit, I think, to bring them down a little bit and show them a bit of, I know it's hard, compassion. When it comes to crime-fighting tech, interceptors could give Batman a run for his money. From 50,000 volt tasers taser, taser, taser. to thermal imaging drones and their big brother. Yeah, about 90 seconds away. We're viewing it at a distance. In short, in this age of technology, you can run, but you can't hide from the interceptors.
There must be four people I think could dog. We're just paying the night sun up now for you. It's gone midnight and Jim Campin is after a suspected thief in a Ford Focus. While late night pedestrians watch in horror, the runaway cuts corners, clips curbs and races with no lights. Jim's at the sharp end, but reinforcements are closing in fast. Last one, Jim. Keep on it, mate. Sergeant Carrington with Lewis Marshall. Zulu 2, we're about two minutes away. And fellow firearms officers Lisa DeSantis. And then first left. And Rich Elliott. Fox up two for me, about one minute. Who are a minute nearer the action than their sergeant. Right again. They arrived just ahead of him and took in behind the lead car. Car behind me. Please double three. Yes, but I'm not too back, mate. But as a brave bystander points the way, TPAC won't be necessary. Coming in from the opposite direction, a crime car's blocked the road, but not the pavement. Oh, Putting pedestrians at risk, the runaway makes the flee on the pavement. In a split second, the cop car makes a tactical turn and takes him out. Decamp, decamp, decamp. But the driver's made a run for it. Where's the cop? Which way has he gone then? Oh, God, he's a manhunt underway, complete with the dog unit. Look, guys. It's organised chaos. The thing is, he's going to be in these gardens somewhere. Oh, on the other side, then. With so many boots and paws on the ground... I'm going to get up here, put this off. It should only be a matter of time. There's so many of us here, it'll be a shame if he gets away. But sheer numbers have worked against them. The melee of us lot trying to get out of the cars, and with all the lights going, I didn't even see which way he went. To add to the mayhem... You won't be able to get out there. Locals are causing a distraction. At the minute, we're just dealing with something quite serious, all right? Yeah, all the local uh, youths have decided they've got nothing better to do. I don't think my life's ever been that boring. I need to stand this close to police incident. With strength in numbers, a ring of cops contains the area, while Jim and Lewis start a garden-to-garden -garden search. I'm in the next garden, Chris. This gate's open, isn't it? Old lady in there. But it's a dodgy needle in a dark haystack job. You need to give us a heads up somehow. The drone or somebody needs this gives us a heat source. We've got to contain, we've got a chance. If we get back out of the front, yeah. While they wait for the drone team... Have we got drone on the way? Jim and Lewis return to the stacked focus. Somebody's garden hopping me out of a car. Which may hold a clue as to why the driver ran. Radiators. Unix radiators? That they suspect are stolen. Unix radiators, really? There were almost 20,000 metal theft offences in England and Wales last year. Driving like this, loaded with scrap, the suspect's lucky he wasn't decapitated. <laughs> I take it that's a radiator mark, not his head. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's dangerous, them rattling around in the car, isn't it? It's a miracle he could run at all. He's on his toes, unfortunately. Drone's going up, see if we can locate him, but at the minute he's um, made good his escape. Uh, with a bit of luck, we'll catch up with him. Sergeant Carrington does it all. Dad of twins, operational firearms commander, TPAC train pursuit driver. But he does let someone else fly the drone. Basically, he's, he's crashed. Yes, pretty much around this junction, right. and he's gone in this direction. OK. So he's either garden up in this way or yeah. it's just down for vicinity. So it's like that quarter there? Yes, pretty much. Drones up, dogs looking, but it's not going to be an easy task. 
Indeed, the drone team is struggling to find anything until they spot a heat source nearby. I doubt it, but drone reckons there's a heat source directly to the near side of what I think is our police car in the garden. The heat is radiating from a red herring. Yeah, to the drone, apologies. We've, we've researched that. That's, uh, it's not our man. Bugger. We have got Empaths lifted, which is the helicopter, but that's 20 minutes away. Yes. There's a lot of ground, a lot of gardens, and I think he's probably escaped. Technology's drawn a blank. Oh, it's such a shame. But sometimes nothing beats old-fashioned detective work. There's been some paper it found in the vehicle. It comes back to one of the local well-known uh, well, criminals, I guess, to us. Uh, he lives around the corner, so we can have a little bit of a walk about. The interceptors did eventually get their man. They couldn't prove he was at the wheel of the Focus full of radiators and took no further action. However, he was later convicted of other unconnected driving offences and lost his licence for six months. Coming up... Keep your door open! Tensions high after reports of a gunfight. Keep that door open! A titanic tussle with an angry suspect... Fight him, fight him. Oh, what are you doing, Bob? There you go. Stop struggling. And Phil's after a familiar face. You can't get away from me, weren't you? No, no, don't. Come off there. Uh... Hold on. Go, 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 get out of the way. Come on. It's a busy night on the A46 and Coops is racing to a property in Nottingham after a worrying call from a member of the public. Got a very early reports a minute of a uh, man with a gun uh, wearing a puffer jacket with a uh, another male. That's all we've got. As Coops' 155-mile-per-hour Skoda clears the traffic... There we go. ..news comes in of a second armed man. Both these males have got pistols firearms and they're chasing one another so firearms are all armed up ready to go <laughs> dogs will be there shortly we'll, we're not having people running around the streets of nottingham branching firearms at one another coop's favorite action hero is rambo so much so that he named his partner after him oh, come on three miles away at these speeds that's less than five minutes coop's has arrived the suspects have gone inside some flats, and Coops joins a convoy of cops. The is the back of it. Who surround the property? Yeah, they're coming out of there. Look, you see them. One of the suspects is back on the street. He's got into a black beamer. So I can you get by me? And firearms have got into position. Yes, yes. Once you pass it, I think that car will obviously have to change direction now. The black BMW this male's got in. They block the beamer and strike. Yes, he's too, I think. Coops and Rambo are ready in case he runs. <gasps> But the suspects made the sensible choice. Contact! Walk backwards towards us, and then we're going to put some anchors on you. Walk backwards towards you. One detained. Two men jumped this. But reports say there were two men with guns. Go inside, please. Go inside. Now. Do it now. No sooner have they cleared bystanders off the street than a man matching the description of the second suspect appears in the door to the flats. It looks like there's a party going on. And with two suspects secured, they decide to clear the building at gunpoint. 
One more time when I call you, wait at the door. Jack, can you have another? You fella, go across to him there. Jack, I'll come and join you. Yeah. Wait a minute, keep your hands where I can see them. Dog's not moving, mate. Dog's not moving. Dog's not moving. In 15 minutes, they've emptied the property. And the party is very much over. We've got everyone detained safely. The house, we believe, is clear, but we're going to search it. We do suspect it to be a BB gun. They might have just made a mistake by playing a game out in the front, front to the building, but still someone's scared about what's happened because they think that someone's fighting with guns outside the address. So we'll go and see and find out what's going on. Led by interceptor Rob Ely, firearms search the house. It's hard, it's hard. And this stuff as well. It's a gas-powered one. It doesn't take long to find the weapons. So they look to be um, potentially gas-powered uh, ball bearing guns, perfect and legal to own. We may look at that and, and identify it as, as not a, a conventional firearm, uh, but to a member of the public out there, they won't potentially know, um, and it's certainly going to frighten people. Right, my gun's going to get confiscated or...? You know, I don't know yet, mate. I'll be lying to you if I said yes or no. You... The suspects and the party crowd are helpful and friendly. Are oh, you part of the armed police team? No, I'm dogs. Oh, oh. oh, your dog? Hey, hey, that's his dog. That's your dog? Yeah? It's your dog? There's four dogs here. Ooh. Hello, yeah. <laughs> but friendly or not, the two boys with the BB guns have been invited to their own party at the Nick. The lads are arrested for waving BB guns around outside got penalty disorder notices for using threatening behaviour. They were each fined £90. This was actually a birthday bash for one of them, but it went with the wrong kind of bank. Not tonight, not on his birthday, not any night. Um, it's not acceptable. Interceptors aren't afraid to get in harm's way to protect the public. Watch out. And sometimes they pay the price. Kick me in the nose, mate. His armour is like hit me in the face, causing my nose to bleed. But there's one blow everyone fears. Don't you spit? Spitting's just horrible. It's, um, I've been spat out and it's, it's just disgusting. That was at the start of Covid. Someone spat in my mouth. It's just not nice. I'd rather be physically assaulted than spat at, to be perfectly honest. It's late morning, two miles from the Derbyshire border. They're dealing from that one, basically, so... Interceptors Kingo and Chantel have eyes on a suspicious pair parked in a VW. Go ahead. Just driven past a car that's parked up is linked to um, potentially a drug driver and is outside a flat that's currently meant to be dealing. Um, like I say... The car has drug markers but appears to be driven by someone other than the registered keeper. The driver has got out at the minute. The plan is for when he gets back in to go and um, go and stop him. Nearby in the unmarked Volvo... This thing was parked outside and just linked to drugs. Possibly might have gone to buy him. When he comes out, plan will be to grab hold of him. Johnny and Matt are primed in case the driver makes a break for it. Had an interesting experience yesterday at home. Oh, yeah? So, um, get a phone call from the neighbour to say, there's a cow in your garden. Men. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't actually particularly happy, because I take pride in my grass. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> Trees been eaten. <laughs> Tales from the countryside will have to wait. The golf drivers left the property and taken off before Kingo and Chantel could swoop. So Matt gets his toe down. Kilo seven off, mate, way towards Lee. Matt's an ice hockey fan, but when he gets his skates on in a Volvo XC70, he's as sure footed as they come. Matt, Church Street. They're on scene in seconds. Okay. To find two cop cars, multiple interceptors, and one stopped golf. Go 
The passengers calm, but the drivers agitated. Just do your search then. Well, I'll do it when I'm good and ready. Just do your search, innit? I'll do it when I'm good and ready, not when you tell me. All right, and do whatever, whatever, mate. Do what you're doing, mate. What's your name, chap? I've just told him my name. No, yeah, I mean, you told me to. Name or no name, he's the spit of a guy they've nicked before. He yeah. spat in my face years ago. Did I? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he's had... The self confessed spitter is loaded into Kingo's car. You've got the keys to this, mate, to double tap it. And while cops go to work searching the golf, he's getting worked up. What's that, man? He's just a bastard. please. They've turned up a purse full of cash on the back seat. Third of state, that's what I was going shopping for. <laughs> Are you buying a house? Are you buying a house? How? The lass claims the cash is hers and there's a considerable amount. North of 800 quid. Well, I've saved up. I had a tin at home. I can show you the tin. We've got money in it. I've cashed money in. Has she? Yeah. Where'd you say that's come from? <laughs> Meanwhile, it turns out the driver is disqualified. Thank you. What does that mean? Disqualified. And not the nicest company. Shout out to the swearing, don't be compliant. Um, he's got history for spitting at police. The driver already has a conviction for assaulting police after spitting in Kingo's face last time they met. Fighting, fighting, fighting. And he's just lunched at Kingo only to be restrained by Lee. Spitting, 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 spitting. No one's spitting. What are you about? Who's spitting? Spitting in my car, Mars. Yeah, I'm. Hey, stop what are you about? struggling and calm it down. But you're fucking. What is that? Just calm it down. They think he's about to spit, and given his history, they move to protect themselves with a spit hood. There you go. Stop struggling. Get off me now, you bald prick. Oh, you stop get struggling off me now. Under the mesh hood, the only person he can spit on now is himself, but he's still struggling. Get off me now. Sit up, then. <laughs> get your seatbelt on, mate. Cops try to keep time in a spit hood to a minimum. Do you want to go with these as well? Yeah. And then at least only three in the car. Calm it down. Get off me, yeah. But this guy's not making it easy. I'm not getting off you now. You've just lunged it in. Stop no, tensing no, up and just calm no, down. Get off me now. No one's this touching head. you. Calm down. Get off me now. It's slow going. You're going to stay calm. We're going to drag you out of here and leg strap you. Well, just chill out here. No, no, you chill out and you listen to what I'm well, saying to you now. Prick, then. No. Well, whatever. It's your choice now. Well, well, take me then. You listen to what I'm saying I'm to listening, you. I'm listening, Arnie. Well, listen and answer me then. Are you going to stay calm? So tell you, I'm calm, all that. I'll tell you what's going to happen. Listen, I'm calm. Just take me where you're taking me. Nobody's scared of you, pal. Nobody's scared of you, neither, you fat. On that note, custody, here we come. He's not a nice individual. He's. He's obviously got previous with the police, so it's a good stop. Um, we'll have to just see how it pans out, I suppose, at custody with him. No further action was taken against the passenger, and the seized cash was returned. No drugs were found in the car or on the driver, who was not connected with any drugs intelligence. He was, however, guilty of driving whilst disqualified and without insurance. He was ordered to pay a total of £213 costs, lost his licence for five years and was sent down for eight weeks at Her Majesty's pleasure. Coming up... That was exactly the same location as last time, weren't it? <laughs> a chance reunion... Well, it's just a bit further down, wasn't it? Yeah. ..with an unhappy ending. It's down to us, took the game off the road. If that means him going to prison, then unfortunately that's what's going to happen. Statistically speaking, most people nicked by the cops learn their lesson. Stand still, hands up. Shoot me, please, I don't do nothing. Around 70% don't re-offend. One of our usual suspects appears to be going on a, a bit of a rampage. Unfortunately, there are exceptions. What have I done wrong? I've not done that wrong. It's almost inevitable that you're going to end up dealing with the same person again. Uh, you'll have individuals that'll take on board what you tell them and you'll deal with them and they'll turn the life around and change. But unfortunately, you'll still have those individuals that will continually break the law.
break the law in, say, a blue transit. Is, um... Which has just ducked down a side road suspiciously. Phil catches up and bathes the blue van in blue light. Gadget man Phil loves nothing more than losing himself in the world of virtual reality. How are we doing? Hey, up. All right. But he's not playing games today. Are you trying to get away from me? No, no, I told me. We'll take a seat, don't he? Let's be keys for a sec. Because you're wanted. What for? Hey, you failed to uh, appear at court. Take a seat on there for one of my jobs. This hey. isn't Van Man's first rodeo. Yeah. Do you currently hold a full UK driving licence? Yeah. Six months back. And do you hold insurance this vehicle? Yeah. Phil nicked him for driving a scrap van whilst disqualified and without insurance. Ultimately, you're going to be going to court for no insurance and driving whilst disqualified. Offences for which he's since failed to attend court. For empty time, I believe, you're to be wanted for failing to appear, OK, and you're also disqualified from driving. Yeah. <clears throat> you're trying to get away from me, weren't you? No, no, at all. Come off it. Uh, on. I quit your turn down here. It's a cordial affair as they shoot the breeze about his last stop. That was exactly the same location as last time, weren't it? <laughs> well, it was just a bit further down, wasn't it? Yeah. But Phil's ready to ruin the reunion. I failed to pay on the 26th of August. I've been down there. He denies failing to attend court, but one fact's beyond dispute. He's still disqualified from driving. Yeah, Ritty, thank you. Yeah, we'll do. Are we leaving it on uh, French Avenue? I'm just going to quickly check that because there's a bit of confusion. He's still showing live this warrant. It was issued by Nottingham Magistrates Court on the 26th of the 8th. I've been to, I've been to um, Notts Crown since. He's adamant that he's nothing outstanding with the courts. The police computer's adamant that he has. You may have gone to Crown Court. There's obviously something gone off between you being at Crown Court and this warrant to Magistrates Court. The warrant's still alive, so something's going to have to get dealt with by the courts. All right? But it got dealt with at ma Magistrates, and then they sent it to Crown? No, that was the job involving the dangerous driving side of things. Yeah. Yeah. Keep up. When I stopped you up here, you were reported for disqual disqualified driving, no insurance. That's what the job is in ma Magistrates Court that you've not been dealt with for. Not the Crown Court job, that, that job. So many jobs. So I'm not disputing the fact that you've been at another court after that, but it was not for that offence. We're going to take you to the police station, you're going to get processed today for these offences, uh, and then put before the court as well as that warrant. Because ultimately, you take it, you take it mick a little bit, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, we're going straight to court. Because I'm dealing with you, I ain't faffing around. Phil doesn't faff. True to Phil's word, his familiar face went to court in the morning. He pleaded guilty to failing to appear, disqualified driving and no insurance. Plus a string of unrelated offences. He awaits sentencing, but should prepare for a period behind bars. I guess I shouldn't be driving, I know I shouldn't be driving, but... I've got a drug habit to fund, and if I don't, I just end up committing serious crime. So, here I am. No worries. I'll leave you be for a short time. Bye. Right. And the Interceptors are back in a fortnight. Tomorrow night, step inside a prison with a notorious roll call of inmates. HMP Wakefield, evil behind bars is at 10. And there's an international WBO title up for grabs this weekend as Josh Kelly takes on Lucas Bastida. The Big Fight Live, Saturday night, 10 o'clock. Next, new 999 Critical Condition. Oh, police! Come to the door! You come to no harm! Shots fired! Crime never sleeps. 
taser thing. But neither stand still. Do the cops. Battling on the front line. Taser! Taser! Or Nottinghamshire's finest. Stop after impact. Highly trained pursuit drivers. Specialists in entry. <laughs> and search. Four ounces of cannabis. Rapid response firearms officers. On police! Show yourself now! Please for the dog stop stop! And the crime stopping force. <laughs> Look at my arm! Of the dog unit. <laughs> Get down on the floor! <laughs> Wherever the battle takes them, they'll never back down. Taser! Because come at the hour. Yeah, Bass, we've still got him. Up at the back wheel, off side of the road. Doing, 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 doing. Come at the interceptors. Where are you from? Leeds. Leeds. Don't come to Nottingham again, will you? Coming up. <laughs> An iffy whiff in the house house. Stop, stop. A suspected dealer is in for a shock. Taser! 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 And cracking the case of a Class A egg laid in a cop car. Where'd that come out of? Jen Els and police dog Quantum are black belts in hide and seek. Police officer with the police dog, you show yourself now. They've sniffed out sneaky suspects in all sorts of spots. Where is he? Where is he? From schools. Get down on the floor. Get down on the floor. Stop struggling. To garden sheds. Right, we need to come out. Get out, get out, get out. <laughs> but tonight promises new ground for the six-legged double act. Firearms cops Lewis and Rich are patrolling a workshop estate when a black Ford Focus flicks their collective switch with its rapid approach. Their instincts say it's worth a closer look. So they spin round and hit the blues and twos. But the focus is off like a shot, failing to stop. The driver goes lights out as he weaves through the estate at speed. Telltale brake lights give it away when the focus hangs a left. The boys race to catch up only to find it's pulled over. There are three passengers inside, but the driver's done one. Enter the dog unit. Jen and Quantum are all over it. Down to 2 2, state 6, please. When it comes to runners, every second is vital. So Jen doesn't spare the horses. Lewis brings her up to speed. I think he's right, they say he's run that way, it's girls, but, but, but I haven't seen him. You haven't seen him. Apparently, the car belongs to one of the girl passengers who let a random bloke drive them home. Eight. Jen and Quantum have been together for five years. Quantum's now seven, so close to hanging up his paws. But there's life in the old dog yet. Quantum's an expert tracker. He just needs a sniff of the driver's scent. Here. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't get the dog out of the car. Target identified. Yeah. The track is on. Where is he? Find him. Where is he? 
they scour the ground for a whiff of suspect. But passers-by are muddying the water. No, don't leave, that bloody jock has just run past, hasn't he? There's also the car's passengers to contend with. Stay there for us, mate. Stay there. <laughs> Go over there. Do as you've told. I'm doing as I'm told. Right, over there, then. Quantum gives them some gentle encouragement. Where is he? Find him. And it's back to the job in hand. Where is he? Find him. Oh, see car. Where's he gone? Quantum's sense of smell is up to 10,000 times more sensitive than that of a human's. Find him. Where is he? And he's picked something up. Where is he? Seeker. 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 Ah, so there we are, mates. Police. Get your dog in. Get your dog in. Dog in. I'm looking for someone. Anyone? It's the police. If the driver came down here, he's not here anymore. Where is he? Find him. It could be miles away by now, but Quantum's not a quitter. And he's picked up a scent by a closed gate. Interceptors are after a driver who failed to stop, then did a runner. Jen and Quantum have tracked a scent to an outhouse. There are two possibilities. Number one, it's their man. Number two, doesn't bear thinking about. <laughs> Understand me? If you run, you'll have a dog coming after you. Quantum and Jen escort him out. Do you understand me? Right. That's all right. You keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Oh. Lewis! He was found a short sprint from the spot where the pursuit ended, but denies driving the focus. He claims to have been answering the call of nature. Now he needs to answer some different questions. Yeah, good lad. Good boy. You're a good lad. Oh, yeah, he's a clever lad, aren't you? Hey, he's a clever lad. Quantum's earned his roast chicken tonight. When I've gone to the side of that car, his body language is picked up. And just he's telling me there's something around there, so that's why I've gone through that gate. Yeah, there is. Door was slightly open. I don't like to open the door in case they attack me, so it's just a matter of putting his nose to the door and there. So I identified him, barked at him. No bite, no paperwork. Perfect. <laughs> he's a good boy. You're a clever lad, aren't you? You're a clever lad. Yes, he's a clever lad. While clever lad puts his paws up... <laughs> Lewis gets down to business, and it turns out the owners of the toilet the hideaway was found in have no idea who he is. Listen, I could have a wee outside. I get eight pounds fine for that. I have a poop, indecent exposure. So you, you can't really go to someone else's toilet, can no, you? No, but what's the crime in that? Mate? If, if I do it anywhere else, I'm getting done for indecent exposure. Come on, just come over here, sir. Let's sit down. Right? You must think, I'm, I'm not looking. You take the ankles off him, mate. Sit down. What's he said? Because he said he'd been. Yeah, he's, he's just, else's he said that. I've just... got any of the poops from down to his toilet. That's a man's ass. As you do. The suspect is sticking to his guns. How old are you, buddy? I'm old, I'm old enough. Why not go and shit in someone's toilet? Might be disgusting, yeah, but who's getting the fine? Get Nick what? Pooing in someone's toilet. Either way, he looks a bit flushed and he reeks of booze. What I need you to do, form a seal round the end, one long I'm, continuous I'm breath. That, mate. 
Right, you you're saying I've been driving. I require, can, can I you, require you to provide me with no, a sample of breath. Right, I, listen, let listen. Let me explain listen, to I you. Require, Shut up. Are we talking Shut to? Shut up. No. But the way he's just been talking to me, big man. You're not listening. Yeah, are you going to provide a sample? Listen to me. There you go. Face your hands. Answer them. Okay. okay. So you're still under caution. Do you want yeah, me to shut, remind you of the shut, caution? Shut the door. Yeah? Shut the door. Do it. He's okay. Okay. Honestly, he's a. The bad cop approach hasn't worked. Hey, up. Enter good cop. Right. You're going to talk to me. Yeah, I'll talk to you, love. Yeah, no problem. Right. So, are you going to provide a specimen of breath for the breath test? Why am I going to provide a specimen of breath, knowing that I'm drunk, looking at a chance of going to jail, like for whatever? Me. I've been drunk as a. I've been in the toilet. A dog's come in. Now bit my arm off and then they're all accusing me. He hasn't bit you though, has he? No, I come out and then they say you've been driving that car and I'm like, which car? I don't drive, love. OK, right. I do not drive. Right, the situation is you've been asked to provide a specimen of breath, you've failed to survive, so you get arrested for that as well. You but know. I haven't been driving, love. OK, well, we'll sort that out. The so station when we save yeah. can't we? So am I getting arrested or what? I'm getting locked up? Yeah, you're locked up. We're waiting for someone to come and take you down to the police station. Love, that is a joke. Why is it? Because it is. The punchline is a night at the Nick, and whilst that's not funny, his Game of Thrones certainly was. I'm yet to find a, a world, a place where going in someone else's lavatory in the middle of the night for number two is acceptable. Um, he obviously thinks it is, but I think if you were to come in my toilet, you know, that would rip him out pretty quick, to be fair. But hey, so that was his story. The outhouse tourist was charged with failing to provide and awaits his day in court. In the bad guy Olympics... He's running towards you. Left, left, down uh, the alleyway. There are no silver medals. You're nicked or you're not. Oh, no, he's gone. Whether the cross country, that's at the bottom of the garden terrace. The steeplechase, Jamie Brayle jumping over a brook, or a flat out sprint. Bruce Ops want to change the stats too! It's a race to the finish, and bad guys usually finish last. Turn around now, get on the floor, get on the floor now! Two ten. Two ten. <laughs> Sausage cob sorted for tomorrow. Gav Hall and the Sarge are seeking something to sink their teeth into today. And this likely lad leaving an alley might be worth a nibble. He's come out the alleyway or that address. I think he's come out of that gate, I think. Sailing down the path, he doesn't seem to have spotted them, but they recognise him. Oh, is that, um... It is, isn't it? They stopped the lad just two weeks ago and caught him with a load of Class A. It is, yeah. Quick, 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 quick. They want a word, but he's off. Stop, stop. Cycle path blocked, it's now a foot race. Gab's come equipped. Taser! 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 Drop the whip! Taser! Taser! <laughs> the mere threat of 50,000 volts sends him tumbling to the ground. Hand behind your back. Hand behind your back. The lad's not so keen on a set of bracelets. Hand behind your back. Get off me first. Come out. Why are you touch me for? Get off me. Put your hand down your back. Hey, do nothing wrong. But resisting arrest can be painful. Ow! 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 No! What have I done? Why'd you run? Stand no. up. Ow! Ow! 
Gavs are fit copper who spends a fair amount of his spare time pumping iron in the gym and running. Stop, stop. So, when a suspected dealer... ..makes a dash for it... Taser! 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 ..there's only going to be one winner. Help me, man! Oh. He were reaching for his yeah, pocket he whilst was. he was running. It's the second time they've nabbed him in a fortnight. I take it you've got another load of Class A in your no, pants. I have but in my pants. Yeah. You mean in my pants? No. Get off my hands. Hang Ow. on a second, I can't let myself think. With the siren silenced, the boys are all ears. I've just come back from my mum's, you're mad. What address have you come from, pal? What, well, Dave, yeah, it's up the road. I've just come down from my mum's. Just oh. told you that. Well, Get you've made off from us. You had Class A in your pants the other week, so we're going to take you in for another strip search. Ooh. All right. Ow! The cavalry rolls in. If they can sit with him, we can retrace, can't we? Yeah. We just need to make sure he hasn't thrown anything that we didn't see or whether he's got any more drugs down his pants. But he's obviously not stuck around for a reason. I haven't tased yes, your hand. Have, brother. You tased my hand. From the top. Gav and Ken head off to see if he's dropped anything dodgy leaving the Sarge to debate the nature of tasers. Taser my hand. I didn't get a taser out. You've got a cut on it. I haven't got a cut on it. You have got a cut on it. Where? Under there, look. He's not the only one with a battle scar. I've chased him, but as I've caught him, I fell. I just bashed my hand. There's no sign of any discarded drugs on the street. But Matt's found some goodies in the suspect's pocket. Gav, I've got a load of it on him. Ah, lovely. I'm well, coming back to you. How much? He's got a load of class here on him. Uh, probably another 20, I would guess, about that size. Wow, well, a little bit of dirt. In the cigarette yeah. packet. Look, so you're under arrest again, mate, on suspicion of possessing class A drugs with intent to supply. There's a starter of weed. There's cracks in the cigarette yeah, packet. Right. Oh. And a main course of what looks like crack cocaine and heroin. 20 wraps. He's carrying on as normal. This was the same lad that was crying the other week when we nicked him wanting a hug. And now he's all acting, you know, like the man. How's your hand, anyway? All right, something to clean him up. I don't need to clean up. You're not bleeding in the car, so you will be cleaned up. You're all heart, Sarge. You know, if when this comes off and I move it, you start dicking around, you're going to go straight face down on the concrete, all right, and you'll end up with more boo-boos. Put your hand to the front, look, where it's more comfortable. Not so tight, please. Right? Cool. Try and keep your hands off my seat, please, if you can. Thank you. All right, we'll get gone. <laughs> They're off down the nick. I weren't expecting to see you so soon, dude. And it's a chance to catch up. What area are you looking at? Where are hands, mate? You remember us, don't you? No, yeah, that is tall. Oh, he's just asking me a question. I thought we were having a conversation. Mm. OK. Thankfully, it's only a short journey. You are getting out. After how much it, like, upset you last time, I didn't think we'd find you again like this. Ready? This way, look. He was in two weeks ago. Possibly. I think he did, yeah. Cool Wits, Class A. Yeah. You can probably just take the circumstances of that one and... They are basically today. exactly the same, yeah. Has you been arrested for a few weeks again and you've got a recent uh, concealed marker? Concealing drugs in your waistband and authorise a strip search. So these two officers are going to go and do that now. There's nothing else on him. And the boys don't think this is Nottingham's Mr Big. <laughs> he's not very good at dealing because he's just completely oblivious to his surroundings. We were riding behind him for about a quarter of a mile. He's not very quick at dealing either, because every time we've stopped him, we've stopped him with all 20 wraps on him. He ain't even had a chance to deal any. <laughs> he needs to get better. <laughs> the suspect was arrested on suspicion of dealing, and both cases are awaiting CPS charging decisions. Still to come. Can I have a drink of that fag, mate? No, mate, you can't. 
proof that smoking can be bad for you. Oh, I'm just you talking. Stay away. away. Will someone get this on video or something? Yeah, it's on yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. It's being recorded on yeah. Channel 5. I don't put on being recorded on. And the net closes in on a dodgy biker. And H, uh, we've got that bike. It's going to be Singleton Avenue. I'm on his way to here. It's Tuesday morning, and Lee Hoffers and the Sarge are racing to join okay. interceptors tailing a suspect yeah. Fiat Panda. Just got behind it on the side of Woodhouse, and we, we suspect the deal in uh, Class A from Mansfield to Mansfield Woodhouse. Over in Mansfield Woodhouse. Chantel and Kingo are behind the panda as it pulls into a car park. So let's just grab him. He's not listening to your car. It's less of a fail to stop, more of a fail to park. You need to go in there. He's gone into the uh, car park now, I've stopped him. You can jump out. I'm in the car. You grab him. Chantel takes the driver as reinforcements roll in. There's a woman in it as well. Just in time to see Kingo see something suspect in the footwell. It's a few wraps of what looks like Class A drugs. Well, I'm going to search now, aren't I? Just keep your hands out your pockets, where we can see them. I don't understand why you can do it. Because you've got drugs in the car, for starters. It's all shaking, yeah. It's in there, no. It's not that. All right, calm down. Right, you started to know him, man. Do you want to just put your handcuffs and stuck in a car? Mm -hmm. Mr. Edgy's carrying some serious wedge. And where's all this money from? Mm. All right. How much is there? Mm. 400 There's something else in the driver's side door pocket, and it's not a bag of Murray mints. You're also under arrest for that. It's an offensive weapon, all right. It's an asp baton, enough to put him in cuffs. Just turn and face the car. Don't, don't get in the car. Just turn and face the car, yeah? No, yeah, just stand there. I don't want to face the thing, right? Ignore that for the moment, OK? I'm searching Stay you. calm. Yeah. The camera-shy driver may have nothing else on him. So jump in then now. Now we've finished searching you. Thank you. But he may have something okay. in him. Those glazed eyes have earned a drug wipe. Uh, all right, stick your tongue out for me. Open your mouth wide, like going to the dentist. Stick your tongue out. Open your mouth wide, like going to the dentist. Shoot. Ah. And like a trip to the dentist, he could be in for a world of pain. Still test for cocaine and cannabis. The test takes eight minutes, and a lot can happen for an interceptor in that time. We'll just take a picture of him, we'll stick him on for the tyres and all. Puffers is inspecting the tyres. What do you reckon? Borderline. Not borderline. borderline. Would you give him three points for it? No. What about that one on the outside? No, so no. Yeah. We'll get expert on it. This pro was a passenger in the suspect's car. It's borderline. Right, it's borderline. I wouldn't give him no points for that. I might leave him that one, but he's going to have to get points for that one. Seriously? Oh, God, yeah. Three points is the least of the driver's worries. With the panda finally parked... Come on, Johnny. Yeah. I'd be all right if you entered it. <laughs> he's got a date with the Nick. We'll stick him in the other car anyway. But he's desperate for a cigarette and spots a smoker nearby. Do you have a drink of that fag, mate? No, mate, you can't. A ciggy could interfere with a full drugs test in custody. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, give him a drink of that fag. Hello, stay away from me. No, no, stay away. Bad move. Oh, I'm just you talking. Can... Stay oh, away. You can do it. No. You for a drag of his... no, you were told not to, so don't do it. Suspects separated from the Siggy, Puffers reached the riot act. He's called Obstacle Peace. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't care. It's not pushing me. I don't care. Yes, do. I don't, well, I don't. You don't do it. It's not pushing Absolutely. me. 
Will someone get this on video or something? Yeah, it's on yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. You're being recorded on yeah. Channel 5. I don't give a f what I'm being recorded on. Carry, carry on swearing and you'll do it and you'll get arrested. <laughs> Puffers has heard enough. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah. Hey. What are you doing? No, he was told not to give him a cigarette and you don't do it and you don't go when they're transporting somebody, <laughs> right, so you don't right. do it. You understand? Yes? Have you got any idea on you? No, I haven't. The Michelin man's back and he's not so jolly now. Get on camera. What's up with you? Well, Tom, no wrong with me. Yes. I said, what's wrong with you? That's no all. No wrong with me. Who wants to drag your fag, mate? We don't know what's in the fag, do we? We have anything in it. Cigarette. Just move away. A Just cigarette. go. Cigarette. I'm moving. How do we know that? We don't, I'm do we? Moving away. We don't know you're what's in it. Told me. All right, move away, otherwise you're going to get f***ed, aren't you? Interceptors deal with this type of abuse on a daily basis, but not usually on a Tuesday morning. I'm going away. Take your stuff and go, away. then. Don't push me away. Right, you're swearing at um, me, you're annoying No, me. I'm not. Get your stuff and go away. No, I'm not. I'm not swearing at you. Get your stuff and go, then, otherwise you'll get arrested. Get away. I'm swearing at you. you going to go or not? You're going to go, you're going to go next. Your choice. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, go, then. I'm going. Well, right oh, off you go then. Grab your poo I'm bags and go. I'm not going nowhere. Well, you are. Or are you getting nicked? It's dead simple. I'm staying here. Stay there then. We're going in a sec. It's been an eventful eight minutes, and the drugs wipe results are in. So there's a faint line there for cannabis on the test line, so that shows it's indicated positive for cannabis, yeah, and that stronger line is for cocaine. Not been like... So it's further under arrest for driving over specified quantity of both of those drugs as well. Chantelle and Kingo will take the suspect to the nick, and there's just time for an apology. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's all right. It is what it is, isn't it? You get this, don't you? you yeah, like but getting... what you need to understand is other people don't want to hear it, do they? No. Yeah? There's people wandering around with kids and all sorts, so yeah. you, that's what you need to think about, mate. We're not bothered. We hear it all the time. I'm just... Uh, I'm You're just the... I'm, what you've just said, aren't you? Right now. Yeah. Right, now. right, let's go. Oh. Good little stop. Didn't expect to get a weapon out of it, but... Yeah, job done. And it's not even lunchtime yet. You've got a suspect with handcuffs on for the drugs, you've got a drunken passenger, and then you'd have potentially two males that are obstructing what we're doing. Um, so it can become very difficult for, for us to do the job. Like you're saying, you don't expect that at half past 11 on a Tuesday morning. And another surprise has materialised in Chantel's car. Um, Kinder X has appeared on me. The suspect has apparently laid a Kinder egg. Where'd that come out of? Most likely from his backside, and it's not a toy inside. That's It's no surprise that Eggman is currently awaiting a charging decision for possession with intent to supply Class A drugs and possession of an offensive weapon. Antisocial bikers are a pain in the proverbial for the interceptors. No VRM, it's Gateford Road. Nicking them is no mean feat. They're off, they're off, they're off. Get them, get them, get them, get them. And when they press home their advantage on off road bikes, the task at hand turns even trickier. They're, uh, they're going across the field back towards Park Forest. Those bikes, you know, in themselves cause us a load of headaches. You know, they, they come at a great annoyance to members of the public. Um, the loud things, they, they tend to be uninsured, unlicensed, rav round estates or, or on main roads to maybe get to um, to some to wood, you know woodland areas and stuff, and yeah, it causes people annoyance. And, and inevitably, a lot of them will, if you go and try and stop them, even though they're not up to any other specific, more serious criminal activity, will inevitably fail to stop for us. Chantel's back on patrol, this time with Matt Storer. Oh, 
who's clocked a group of bikers travelling at speed. The bikes were a way off, and Matt's got some catching up to do. Looks so They sight four motorbikes up ahead, weaving all over the road. One cuts across a car park heading towards Woodland. But Matt only has eyes for the leader, who sped off into the distance. We've got one failing to stop on Barringer Road. There's currently a temporary loss. Civil vehicle to see the train driver. He spotted the bike ahead, turning off tarmac and onto a forest track. He's going to be changed lost this time, mate, if he's gone off-road. Off-road, the odds may be stacked against him, but Matt's worked this patch for over eight years and knows the area like the back of his hand. And the bikers likely escape route. Going to the woodland, they're probably going to come out towards um, Sherwood Hall Road. Two have pulled over and then two have made off, both wearing a helmet. One had a VRM, one didn't have a VRM. When it comes to fail to stop bikers... It's almost going to Old Mill Lane, that's a sort of potential way where they could get out onto. The interceptors hunted packs. We just dropped onto this channel, um, Sims drive a suitable vehicle and stick on board. Paul King of Kingston and Lee Huffer does it make sense? Yeah, hello. Soon have a couple of bikes in their crosshairs. Turn to the left here. One just duck down this side street. Matt, just come back down to um, Barringer Road. There's a couple of bikes here. I don't know if it's two is made off from you. They want to just come out of Sanders Avenue. There he is, struggling to get out of sight. And H, uh, we've got that bike, it's going to be Singleton Avenue and it's left left into a car park. Worst hiding place ever. Got him. Got him. Yeah, I'm but, but I haven't sorted that out. That needs sorting out. I just bought it off Cabia. Yeah, you haven't. You've just failed to stop officers. Hey, I've not just bought that, I Have swear it. to God. You've just failed to stop. You're out of I breath. I have just bought that. You're out of breath, and about oh. when I touch the engine... Excuse it's me. you just failed I've to just... stop. I haven't. I've just bought that. But the boys don't buy your story. Who are? Oh, wow. You smell a drink as well. Yeah, because I've just... Oi, come in out me, bro. Tell these I've just bought this. I know you have that. I've just bought it. it. They're mad at me, bro. Sounds like you bought a beer or two as well. From Mike Kilo, we've got one detained. I was just about to buy that. Avenue. Yeah. You, you were riding it. Yeah, if Matt can come up and try an ID of his lad. Yeah, I've just bought that. There's a burning issue with his story, though. But it's red off. Yeah, I know, I've just literally bought that. Right. I've literally just bought it from... I've li <laughs> the engine's hot and he can't remember who he bought it from. Bought it from... I've li <laughs> I can't believe that. If it's been I can't either. Through, I can't believe it. It don't even run. Don't it? That's why engine's red hot then. His story's holier than the Pope's polos. Have you got a license? No, you, but I've not. Have you got, you got a license? I've, you have, I've, 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 Fella, I watch you ride it. I haven't. You can't lie straight in bed. It'll be on that camera. And we've seen you do it. I can't believe that. You'll end up killing someone, pal. No licence, no insurance, and now no bike. The off-roaders going off-road permanently, as Chantel and Matt join the party. Thanks for my bike, man. Oh, I yeah. just bought it. Yeah. Just, just literally bought it. Me, you took my bike, man. I want to take that there race for There was four of you. You were clearly together. But, uh, listen, it's what? not. Why did you not stop? See you in the okay, It's not me. Either way, Kingo's seen him on his bike. I promise you. Fella, I've seen you driving it. I've seen you riding it out here. Send me, send me a yeah, you're right. I've just bought the bike, man. The roadside breath test machine is on the blink, so it'll be taken to the station to blow. I can't believe I've just bought that bike and they've done this to me. He's like a broken record. I bought a cigarette, I've just bought a bike. And they've heard enough. Not listening to me. We suspect he's been uh, riding a bike by some of the influence of alcohol. He's got no driving licence and no insurance for a bike. As you can see, it's a non registered bike. Try and claim it, he's just bought it. It makes no difference. Go ahead. 
So it'll be seized under 165 of Road Traffic Act um, for no insurance. And she's come to light as disqualified from driving as well. 10-4, thank you. He's facing serious charges, and it seems he's caused some further damage. Upon him trying to get away from us, and hide, he's gone down here in his corvette. That and it's cut into a paintwork, and then you can see the, the red angle mark on it. Right, pop out then, we'll come into our, uh, come into our car, mate. Mate, you can't in a minute. There you go, pop in there. Fine message. You right? Next stop, Mansfield, Nick. Sorry. I've just bought the bike. This could be a long journey. I've just you. bought the bike. Yeah. Uh, We're going to do it out of this. Yeah, I've, ju I've just bought the bike. Back at the Nick, the just bought a bike guy refused a breath test. He later pleaded guilty to disqualified driving, no insurance and failure to provide. He was given an eight-week prison sentence suspended for 18 months, was fined £228 and got a six-day rehabilitation order. No further action was taken in court regarding the damaged van. What do they need to do that with his antisocial behaviour, the fact that not got a lot driving licences, are not insured. That's not a road-registered bike. Um, and a lot of the time, the younger lads are using them. They don't really have to use bikes, using them on the road, causing danger to other road users and members of the public. So we do need to crack down on them. Still to come. Yeah, we've got this vehicle lit up an edge, albeit very slowly. It's failing to stop at the moment, Mansfield Road. The world's slowest pursuit goes off road. James Macca McClintock and Dan Butler are on the lookout for a car. It's uh, Honda CRV in silver. On the report, it says someone obviously has searched it prior, so he's got baseball bat, golf clubs in the boot. The interceptors have a history with the Honda. It's a vehicle which has failed to stop for the ARVs before. Understood, mate. And when well, it failed to well, stop. A couple of weeks ago, it tried to ram the ARV. They dearly like the rammer's collar, but it seems the vehicle is used by several different drivers. It's been used as a bit of a pool car by people in Sutton, so it's one of them that it just depends who's driving it on the day. Whoever's at the wheel tonight, the car's pinged an ANPR camera nearby. I'm just going to get up to the Red Hill Road junction here. That might be it here. Dan plots up in a position to intercept, and they don't have to wait long. There's a couple of occupants. I think it's got a couple of occupants, and it's uh, committed towards the city. To anyone coming towards this CRV, it's um, at the VW garage, or now Kia garage, apart from the close lane going towards the city. We'll go for a compliance stop on Mansfield Road. Other units are en route. They're just uh, lighting it up now. The blues are on and the driver finally responds. Got a near side indication um, near to the Premier Inn. But he passes the Premier Inn and given the car's history, Dan's wary. I'm going to get nice and close, mate, in case there's a reverse ram. He's thinking about it. Yeah, we've got this vehicle lit up an H. Albeit very slowly, it's failing to stop at the moment, Mansfield Road, into the city. Um, got rear occupant, I think it's got three adult occupants, one of which is on the phone now looking out the window. Still got a near side indication, but it's still moving. Dramatic scenes as the slowest pursuit in interceptor history goes off road, and the Honda mounts the pavement. He stops. But Mac is not convinced he'll stay stopped. He's either buying time or he's going to go. With the ramming fresh in their minds, the last thing they want to see... Reverse lights, just watch him. But help is at hand. Yeah, received. Get round the front. That's it. He's now the filling in an interceptor sandwich. 
from uh, six four. We did have a flicker reverse lights, but he's had a change of heart as the uh, marked beamers uh, cut his nose off. Uh, it was stop stop. Let's get driver out. Right. You right, mate? Yeah. No, just pop out for us, please. Have you got your documents with you? I am, mate. Just come and join me uh, near my car. I'll explain to you why we've asked you to stop. Yeah, no worries. Just come on the pavement. Sure. Are you the only only driver of your car? Does anybody else ever drive it? I basically, I've look, I'm trying, I'm looking at buying it tonight. I'm having a little test drive. Here. Okay, right. It's my, my friend's car. Okay. Over there. I've just had a little test drive, I'm looking at buying it. OK, I've no worries at all. This is the first time I've drove it. The owner is the front seat passenger. Just sit in the car, please. Right, and bro. This is the joke. First time I've drove it. And the driver's apparently on a test drive. But there's an immediate issue. What type of driving licence have you got, mate? Mate, I'm not going to lie to you, I've got provision. OK, that's fine. Well, I'd rather you be up front and honest. It's confession time. So before you set off on your test drive, did you get any insurance for the vehicle, mate? Mate, I'm not going to lie, no. no. Despite the lack of licence and insurance, the driver doesn't match the description of the bloke involved in the previous ramming. Yeah, I'm happy yeah, that you're no not worries. involved in that. Yeah, okay? yeah, no worries. Well, I, obviously, I pulled, I pulled over. Yeah. I know it took a little while. Obviously yeah, you, you got me dead twitchy. Nice. I thought, I didn't know, oh, is he going, is he not? Are we off, no, off, well, off? No, well, I, no, I actually just thought he was getting past. I was looking for space, do you know what I mean? Right, OK. While Dan continues dealing with the driver, the owner of the car has taken an interest in Macca's taser. Uh, Any? Have you ever tried it yourself? Maybe with a vest on. I've not been shot with one, no. Nice feeling. Is it? Yes, yes. <laughs> Shall we try it? Just something to while the camera's on. No. No time for a game of taser tag. But there is time to search his car. Not been golfing then, then. Golf? I don't know. Oh, oh, right, no, yeah, golf. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Golf drivers can be used as weapons, but can also be used to play golf. <laughs> And it's the other driver's actions in the spotlight tonight. No, because he's been driving it without a licence, so the vehicle's going to be seized. You need to stop letting him drive I've your car. Hell plates on, why haven't you put the hell plates on? He's got no insurance either, or licence, so it don't matter about hell plates. Yeah, but you're not driving, mate. Yeah, but I will in a second. No, you yeah. won't. It's too late now. Well, he's don't walk home for a let the car. Yeah, you have to ring a taxi. Well, at least they won't be going home hungry. Don't forget your um, bait well slice on the roof. That's to, he says that's to pull his beard. She's a lucky lady. Now, there's just the matter of getting the Honda to the station, which also calls for a sensitive touch. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm sorry. Whoever's driving it, <laughs> I'm trying to put foot down too much, it goes into limp mode. Right, OK. So you have to come back off and just feather it. OK, no worries. Yeah, it's all right. As long as, you, as long as you don't go to the floor of it, it's all right. Sound all right. Got it, Macca? Just feather it if it drops into limp mode. Because he's going to take it out. He's going to take it out to limp mode for me with his OBD. An OBD is a device that connects with the car's electronics. I'm only driving it quarter of a mile. But just take the engine light out. Wait. Bugger. Here we go, here we go, drum roll, drum roll, there we go, yes, beautiful, <laughs> thank you very much, yeah, the handbrake there, oh that's posh isn't it, it's a nice ride What's that actually, Lock. Lock. Is there, sir. looks proper lush, beautiful, I'm going to put a bit of water in, right I'll see you later gentlemen, always a pleasure, never a chore, there's time for one more confession from the driver. It's a flat battery, do we? I didn't give you a chase. If I'd have been an RS3 or something like that, yeah. it have been different. We could have had some fun. All right, mate. <laughs> right. Show that door. We'll right. catch you in a bit, mate. Take care. Armed with instructions as clear as the Honda's windscreen, Macca eases her into the night, feathering as he goes. You man, then. Take care. Thank you. Sorry. I do apologise. God bless you. And you, mate. The driver was reported for driving without a licence and no insurance. His fate is now in the hands of the Criminal Justice Unit. History in the skies. Rob Bell has the Lancaster bomber on his radar in brand new British planes that won the war Friday at nine. The team have a horror fall to deal with next. It's one not to be missed. New 999 critical condition.
to the door. You come to no harm. Shots fired. Crime never sleeps. Taser thinks. But neither. Stand still. Do the cops. <laughs> Battling on the front line. Taser! Taser! Are Nottingham's finest. Stop out for impact. Highly trained pursuit drivers. <laughs> Specialists in entry <laughs> and search. Four ounces of cannabis. Rapid response firearms officers. On police! Show yourself now! Please for your dog stop, sir! And the crime stopping force <laughs> Look at my arm. of the dog unit. Get down on the floor! <laughs> Wherever the battle takes them, they'll never back down. <laughs> because come at the hour. Yeah, Bass, we've still got him. Up at the back wheel, off side of the road. Doing, 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 doing. Come at the interceptors. Where are you from? Leeds. Leeds. Don't come to Nottingham again, will you? Coming up. Police officer with the taser brake, stand still now. Joe gets a full body workout. Clean up! Young fuck out. Relax! The Sarge gets some argy argy. Oh. And... Do your 100 for a box, just go to speed. A top speed T-pack... Box on, box on, nice and tight, nice and tight. Straight out the top draw. Stop. Speed is 7 0. Ending a high speed pursuit safely <laughs> is the holy grail for an interceptor. You've got three in your stick, runners. I'll be car two. The number one weapon in their toolkit we get chance just boxing is the T pack. Strike, strike, strike. Stop, stop, stop. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! It's tactical pursuit and containment, and with that comes inherent dangers because you're boxing cars in that are on the move. Ideally, you want them on some of the bigger roads where you've got a bit more control, less members of the public involved, such as, believe it or not, roads like motorways. They're higher speed, but they're preferred options for, for T-packs. I mean, they're big roads, lots of lanes that stretch obviously all the way across the carriageway, and it is more high risk, it is highly skilled. But, but we train hard, we're involved in these kind of tactics a lot. Um, you know, nine times out of ten, uh, we get the result. It's a sunny Sunday. And interceptors are kicking off the traditional day of rest with an early morning pursuit. Silver VW Golf. Can't see the driver, but it's covered up with playing cards. A VW Golf, evidently with something to hide, has failed to stop in the city centre. One occupant, white male with a beard, speed is five six. His motives are unclear, but his methods are all too familiar. Approaching the uh, red top line, on the side of the road, risky medium, back to the right side of the road. The Sunday traffic may be light. But wet roads and low sun makes for a treacherous combination. The is off, guys. Where's my tactical units, please? It's high time cops called in the cavalry. Can we get uh, stinging units and helicopters traveling, please? Dog handler Jen Else has also picked up the call. Please, please, traveling. Unable to shake the tail, the golf's driving becomes increasingly reckless. CTA for the other units, please. After taking a blind bend at almost 60, he zips across the carriageway with scant regard for other road users. The golf is heading for the main road that circles the western fringes of the city. He clearly reckons the dual carriageway could offer an escape route. 
but there's a few things he doesn't know. I've got two in the seat. Where's the first car, please? There's now two cop cars on his tail, a third en route, and that's not all. Keep the commentary coming. We've got some local units for Stinger. An order has been placed for a Stinger. But the Golf has opened the taps, pushing the pursuit to north of 90 miles an hour. Approaching the uh, junction for uh, 8453. Committed, committed 852 towards the city, going above the fly over now. At these speeds and in these conditions, one false move could spell disaster. Cops have got to bring this pursuit to an end. Their best shot lies with the Stinger unit, which is just half a mile up ahead. The car behind is just on back off a bit about the Stinger being deployed. The team with the metal teeth are in position. Still ring road, still lane two. If they can slide the spiky strip into lane two, it's game over for the golf. Yeah, the yard marker approaching now. Lane two, lane two. Timing is everything. The eagle eyed driver clocks the waiting cops and swerves to avoid the sting. Stinger was a mid. It was left, left, left. It's all right. They fixed 10 outbound. Stinger was The good news is that a build up of traffic has brought the interceptors valuable time. But now that other way out there in the stick. A third unit has now fallen in behind, and the Golf reacts with his rashest move yet. His desperate bid for freedom is now leading multiple cop cars across county lines. Fasten your seatbelts, he's heading for the motorway. Down, With an extra lane of tarmac up ahead, the interceptors can begin to hatch a plan. Those other units, let the ARVs through. They'd be out coming in behind you. The convoy has now been joined by a further two tactical units. Among them, Sergeant Jim Carrington. Should we shoot? Can I suggest if we get four tactical units with us, we try a box? In the meantime, let's keep it on. With a fourth unit bringing up the rear, interceptors are going for the T pack. But the pursuit is rattling along at more than 100 miles an hour. I'll go on, I could concur with that tactic. Or can possibly achieve it. Attempting a box at these speeds requires the reflexes of a fighter pilot. With a quiet stretch of road, the lead unit makes its move. This lad seems hell bent on risking it all. Nottingham, interceptors have been led on a not so merry dance around town by a runaway golf. Lane two, lane two. Having skipped past the stinger, he's hightailed it to the M1, where a convoy of cop cars go for the box. Chief one attempted box or slow down. No contact, stand by. Now at upwards of 80 miles per hour and directed by Sergeant Jim Carrington, the pack of interceptors mobilise for strike two. Get to the team, let's do it now then. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Lane four, box on, box on, nice and tight, nice and tight. Box on, box on, box on. The strike is slick, but it's not over yet. Four cops and one angry dog are required to extract man from motor. 
to uh, the officer on the scene. Just confirm it's a stop, stop, no damage. Drive the detained. With only minor damage to one of the police cars and the suspect safely in cuffs, it's a stunning result for the team. Empath, uh, you can camp door, please. Thanks, uh, thanks for attending. A sweet victory in a pursuit that could have ended very differently. The driver who decided to have a pursuit for breakfast pleaded guilty to dangerous driving, driving without insurance and without a valid licence. Failing to stop was withdrawn at court. He is currently awaiting sentencing. It's late on a Friday night. Ken and Joe are cruising the inner city suburbs. Up ahead, they spot two cars razzing round an industrial estate. Oh, man. The cops have put two and two together and suspect boy racers. One motor pulls over, but the beamer puts his boot down. Before appearing to have second thoughts. He's not looking behind him, is he? He's just driving. Until it finally becomes clear what they're up to. Runner. Runners from a vehicle, runner, runner. Um, we're off in industrial state, just off. Ken and Joe only have eyes for the driver. He's forward, forward, mate, forward. Bingo. Police officer with a taser, mate, stand still now. Former lifeguard Joe's been making waves since joining the force four years ago. He's taser trained, but usually prefers old school methods of policing. Stay down! Stay down! Not much. That ought to do it, Joe. Enough. Ken's finally caught up with him. Behind your back. Behind your back now. We've got him detained. I'm going to secure the car, Joe. Had a, a three series coupe, driving like an idiot. He's looked in his rearview mirrors, jumped out there while it's moving, abandoned it. Joe's got him detained. The driver may be in cuffs, but Ken senses a potential problem. Got a bit of a crowd going, so you get an ace up, that'd be appreciated. The arrest has attracted a bit of local interest. Uh, shut up. <laughs> and they're rounding on Joe. What's happened? Some silly lad can't drive properly. Porn up live. Yeah. Porn up live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shaggy man. Shaggy man. So the imminent arrival of a backup unit is most welcome. Yo. Yo. <clears throat> Who was that? I got a clue. Whoever he is, he's certainly keen to put on a show. I believe, believe. Oh, stop dragging me to the camera in here. I'm standing here, I'm standing here, you get me from. What you do is you're told. Why is that me? Well, back off. What are you doing, don't I'm telling you to back off. You were past Crown control is all part of the job, and it'll take more than a few camera phones to rattle an interceptor. Let's do his vehicle check, please, and for a chassis check. The driver claims the beamer belongs to a mate. Well, I thought there'd be something in the car to go with the ridiculous behaviour. But I don't think there's going to be. I think it's just going to be driving offences. There's no sign of drugs in the motor. Nothing illegal, anyway. Shed loads of these canisters. But speeding around an industrial estate for kicks is no laughing matter. He's literally jumped out of it, left it rolling, and it's rolled into the lamppost, so... Do you care? It just goes to show, you know, you, you, you one turn away from madness. I think for us, like, we're trying to process, well, what is it I've got in front of me here? Is this car, is this car failing to stop? Or is this car trying to evade us? Has he even seen us yet? Uh, and then you, you, the answer's kind of put for you when you see the driver jumping out while the car's still moving. Um, obviously, it looks like there was two lads in the car, and, you know, but we, we've got to go after that driver. We know we need to, we need to secure him. The lad behind the wheel's not just been careless, he's also suspected of driving without a licence and without insurance. OK, so you don't have to say anything but my army defence, if you do not mention now, so unfortunately, later on, a court, and he do say maybe giving an evidence, do you understand? Mm. 
the beamer is being seized. However, because he's been nicked for nothing more than motoring offences... Yeah. Let's get his cuffs off then and we get him on his way. The driver is free to make his own way home. I mean, when you think about the action, like, his actions there, jumping out of a moving vehicle, you'd almost compare that to, you know, him being on the run for some serious offence for a long period of time. But the reality was, he hadn't got a licence and he hadn't got insurance. He... And he left the car to roll into a wall, but it was his mate's car. So none of the decisions he made were going to end up well for him. Um, but quite clearly, that was a bit of a flashpoint, a bit of a meeting point for, for that group. They obviously all knew each other. They were all filming it. They all loved the aftermath of it. Uh, you know, the fact that they could have put people in, in danger doesn't even register to them. You know, that, we're, the, we're, the, we're the bad guys for ruining their fun. And the sooner they get that out of their head and grow up, the better. The lad was charged with driving without due care and attention, without insurance and without a licence. He's currently awaiting his day in court with the magistrate. Hopefully, he'll think again before messing with Big Joe. Joe has the extra few inches on his legs that make him a fraction quicker than I am. So uh, he was in the right seat tonight for the right event. With more than 13,000 ANPR cameras positioned across the UK, each one hooked up to the police national computer, interceptors have a web of information at their fingertips. Our access to all of our technology is now a bit of a game changer, really, because we can do it out and about, real time in front of us. We've got access to laptops, smartphones that we carry with us in the cars, and it makes our our business is a lot easier and makes the, um, the cat and mouse game between us and the, and the bad guys and girls more difficult for them to get away. And quite often it's the technology and the access we have to it um, that gets us our best results. Thursday morning, and Ken's back out on the early shift with Dan Mottishaw. We shall see where the wind takes us. Is that, is that an expression? <laughs> Ken's got away with words, a passion for Italy and a penchant for pizza. But this Renaissance man's favourite hobby is nicking drug dealers. A car with markers for drugs has triggered an ANPR camera nearby. Yeah, just past Porchester coming inbound. I'm just going to do a check. I'll go that way then, shall I? Yeah. Ken's laptop delivers instant results. The motors are white, VW, registered to an address in Derby. Could be a car that's linked to the production of cannabis. Markers for that one. one uh, that's the budget. The boys are travelling in a marked-up Volvo, hardly incognito. Well, lane three at uh, Junction with Hooters, so we'll be going Queen's Road, uh, bordering the meadows. Once off the main road, Dan hits the blues and twos. Yeah, towards the train station, near the train station car park. The driver complies. It's Ken's job to find out who's behind the wheel. Hello. Hello. Are you OK? I know. I have the mirror here. I know, yeah. Yeah, he just comes up, yeah. I thought it was still on. It's just, yeah, no worries. Any ID? Uh, bank card. The driver thinks he's been pulled for having a dodgy wing mirror. Thanks, buddy. No worries. Ken decides to keep up the charade. I'm just going to do some checks, mate, OK? No just going in the sec. Yeah. But he's just got something stashed in the motor. He's given me an excuse to stop him because he's talked about his wing mirror straight away, but when he's opened his centre console, he's just got a bundle of cash there ready. Oh, okay. So I'm going to pretend to do some checks on the computer for yeah, all yeah. of 10 seconds, and we'll just Might tell him this thing. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Cool. Carrying large amounts of cash around is obviously not a crime. Hey, buddy, all right? But the driver wants to fess up to something else. Sound, buddy. I think it's... Uh, I see you. I think I don't have road tax here. 
You haven't got road tax? Oh dear. <laughs> uh, this, because I decided to sell it, mate, yeah? And uh, yeah. I think I'm going to sell it in two days. Yeah, so right, OK. He's certainly cooperative. Let's hope that continues when Ken reveals the real reason behind the stop. I've done some, some checks and there's some intelligence saying you're involved in drugs. Dealing drugs or something, all right. What's that? Cannabis. Drug, involved in cannabis, I don't know. Is there any, any drugs in the car or anything like that? Not really. What have you got? You want some cannabis? Uh, yeah, mate. How much? A lot of cannabis, mate, yeah. A lot of cannabis? No, 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 no. What you got? Just on the babies, yeah. Oh, you got plants? Plants. Plants. All right, buddy. Play with shoes. And stay your seatbelt off for us, mate. The man says he's got some babies in the car, a slightly alarming term of phrase, which is actually shorthand for baby cannabis plants. Just jump in here, mate. Is it just a, just a few plants, then, is it? <laughs> 50, mate. 50 plants? Yeah. Time for a quick head count. Do we get in there, then? Yeah, we've got about 40 babies. 40 here. Not quite the 50 he admitted to, but he's not done yet. I got one, uh, one ounce of coke as well, mate. Where's that? In the car, mate. There's an ounce of coke. Yeah. An ounce of cocaine is nothing to be sniffed at. It has a potential street value of well over fifteen hundred pounds. I suppose at this point, then you're under arrest on suspicion of possession with intent to supply uh, cannabis and cocaine. All right, an ounce of cocaine is a fair old amount, mate. He's taking those plants to set up in a property somewhere, um, so obviously to make a, a full-size cannabis grow. So 40 plants matured is going to be worth quite a lot of money. An ounce worth of cocaine, which is suspected cocaine, are worth a lot of money, so it's a nice little stop, first off. The stop may be over, but the job is far from finished. Once the suspect's been booked in back at the Nick, the boys can have a proper route around in his motor. There's your grand, I'd guess. Oh, yeah. Morning, then. Nice. It gives them a clearer picture of who they could be dealing with. Got quite a large amount of cash, probably all in all from different parts of the vehicle, around £2,000 cash as well. Uh, all sort of the, the marks of uh, dealing drugs, basically. But we'll look at, do some research on properties that he's linked to or got any control over, and then see if we'll get any Section 18 searches authorised. We'll go and do those searches and hopefully recover some more uh, drugs, cash, or anything else that will link him. Checks have revealed a property connected to the man in Derby, and the team have got the keys. Will the man with the babies on board have anything bigger stashed away? After a white VW pinged an ANPR camera in Nottingham city centre... Do you want some cannabis? Uh, yeah, mate. Cops came across a fairly friendly chap who was carrying a fair amount of drugs. I got one ounce of coke as well, mate. He was taken to custody, while the team headed off to search a property connected to him in Derby. Once inside, it didn't take too long to get a sense of what might be lurking. Nice. I smell cannabis, but where's that smell coming from? Oh, hello. What's this? What you got? Hello. Well, is it cannabis? Big bag of cannabis. Oh, thank you. That's uh, You're very welcome. Thanks, Sammy. So, was I Two carrier bags full of weed, an estimated six ounces. Some thick old buds there. There's some in the air in this one as well. I'm not gonna we'll keep that one intact. Now, Mike's just found something whiffy in the fridge. It smells a bit of ammonia. Either the milk's gone bad or they've hit the jackpot. Or could it be crap? Could it be coke? Could it just be a massive be, yeah. frozen bottle of coke? Yeah, because so, they just take it out. Yeah, seize that. Put it there as well. I can smell it more now. Let me go get some bags. Oh. We're not sure exactly what it is at the moment. Um, it's obviously quite a hard white substance with a spoon in which. You know, I, I don't have this type of thing in my fridge. If it is cocaine, it's just going to be worth, you know, considerable amounts of money. The only way to find out for sure is to get it tested. We've got the phones, we've got the cannabis, we've got the cash. So, once everything's bagged up, the boys transport the goods back to the Nick, 
where the mystery white substance is taken straight to the lab for analysis. Just testing code K, and we're going to test amphetamine, and we'll test crystal meth as well. Each test will be able to prove them what it potentially is. To the boy's surprise, the cocaine test comes back negative. So, what is it? This, at the moment, is giving a positive for, for well, positive indication for amphetamine. Step three, amphet. Disappointing. Uh, disappointing, but it's still cute. Yeah, it's, the, yeah, it's, it's still a class B. Yeah, at least it's not no. bloody cooking oil or. <laughs> duck fat. Can you imagine? Oh yeah, we've got a kilo of duck fat for you, CID. What's that? <laughs> Amphetamine or speed is a class B drug worth significantly less than cocaine. Even so, this single kilo block could sell on the street for around five grand. Not a bad bit of work for Ken and the team. It's always a good day when you what on patrol half an hour. And you know you you act on you act on a bit of intelligence and it comes up trumps, and that's kind of what's happened today. You know it's a real disruption and potentially a, a wider investigation to be commenced as part of you know something else that's going on. The suspect is currently under investigation for possession with intent to supply a class A and B substance, and for the production of cannabis. The case is ongoing. I swear to God, I should spit in your face. Some suspects are a bit like volcanoes. Oi, you can go. Oi, oi, get up. At any given moment, they can blow their top. Get on the floor! Do you spit at me, mate? You spit at me! The main reason people turn from calm to aggressive pretty quickly is uh, substance misuse, so whether that be alcohol, drugs uh, or both, that um, tends to make people pretty unpredictable at times and, you know, they can go from being fairly calm within seconds to being a bit of a, a bit of an handful. And then also there's the uniform side of it, I mean, some people just really don't like the police um, and our presence alone can sort of uh, infuriate them a little bit and they, uh, they become sort of verbally aggressive towards us. It's a balmy Friday evening in Knotts. Yeah, receive Sarge, uh, 30 seconds away. Dog handler Coops is en route to an emergency on the southern fringes of the county. Had a call saying that uh, a vehicle, single vehicle, was crashed just down this country road, uh, overturned its on its roof. Two young lads have got out of this car that's got no insurance. He's whipped his top off and they've walked off. But now we're going to go and look if we can get hold of them because um, the car could be stolen. So we are nearby now and it just should be around this corner, the uh, crashed vehicle. A familiar flicker of blue and red up ahead draws Coops in. Oh, yeah. Where he's presented with a pretty shocking scene. That is nasty. It's a miracle anyone survived at all. Hi, uh, mate, you all right? Can you see up near the local shop? Apparently, they borrowed this gent's phone to make a phone call. There could be a woman coming to pick him up. Right, OK. He's dressed all in grey. One of them that's done a run. Yeah, OK, mate, yeah. Growing up, Knott's born Coops was desperate to become a cop, developing a strong sense of right and wrong from an early age. And he's got little time for unsavoury behaviour. I'm pissed out, man. Are you all right, house? You know what? Five men. Five men. There's children. There's, there's children stood here. Five men. The gentleman in question is relieving himself against a garden fence. Coops has seen her more than enough. There's children there. There's people down there. Right, there's a car right, crashed up there. There's a car crashed up there. I'll back away from you. You'll stand there now. Oh, You'll stand right, there. Right, you won't go any right, further. All right. All right. Listen, just listen. Just have, so have 30 seconds and just relax without speaking. So She's had a drink and I haven't, and yeah. we're going to fall out. This bloke isn't one of the suspects from the car crash. However, urinating in public can land you with a fine or a charge for a public order offence. It's my nana's 70th birthday, right. surprise birthday party. Right. right. And we're down there. We heard there was a car crash up here. Yeah. We came up here. They was round there. 
and I had a piss there. Right. Like, nobody could see me. Oh, so, I'm not uh, doing anything incriminating. Yeah, you are. You're shouting excite. You're anything. making a show of I'm yourself. Not threatening I'm threatening you. I'm telling you. Don't shout at me. Don't shout at me. Well, I'm direct. going on my own. You understand? Yeah, I'm you, going you, on you my go way. You go on your way, seeing a bit. And you, take your little camera, rude boy, you little pervert. Oh, mate, you're the one with your penis out, mate. What? You're the one oh, you're with your penis out. I'm right. the one with my penis out. Right. All right, all right, I'll back off. Do you understand? Turn off. around now, turn around. I'm going over. Yeah, I thought so. Go in. You're, you're an idiot, mate. You're a bullet. That's what you are. Do you want to be here and come back then? Come back and get arrested. Come back and talk. Come back and talk to me then. Come back and talk. Come back and talk to me. The man's becoming increasingly heated. Maybe this lady can help cool him down. Right. Shazen. Right. You've been an arse. Relax. No, no, no. You've been an arse. Bradley, relax. Relax. Relax, Bradley. Please. Bradley. Get off my arm, man. No, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Get off my arm. Bradley, let me speak to him for two seconds and he'll be on his way, all right? It turns out the woman is the bloke's mum. But he's not listening to her either. Try to piss up. Fence. Right. Yeah, mate, mate, cut. All right, no, no, listen, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, listen, I'm sorry. I'm not entertaining. I ain't entertaining. Listen, I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. As he resists arrest, the man drags both cops to the tarmac, where the Sarge's head lands with an almighty crack. So, uh, how could you put this on tennis, man? What the f? We don't turn it! It's on tennis! Get out of here! It's on tennis! It's on tennis! Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This bloke's al fresco comfort break has taken a decidedly dark turn, and he knows he's bang in trouble. Listen, I'm so sorry, you lot. Yeah. He's apologised to his family. So sorry, you lot. Listen, I'm so sorry, you know. And to the cops. I'm not that kind of guy, you know. But assaulting a police officer is a serious offence, and saying sorry won't cut it. Why am I acting like this? Why am I acting like this? I'm so sorry, yeah, you guys. Right. His explosive behaviour remains a problem for the cops, and seeing as Mum couldn't calm him down, <laughs> maybe Dad will have more luck. I've, I've just been a dick, I know. I've been a f***ing idiot. I have been an idiot. These lot were trying to be all right with me, right? And, and, and I've been an idiot, and I have... Uh, there's there's a police officer there. He's got a crack in the back of his head you know and bleeding all down the back of the head. Don't make it sound like he's... If you're his dad, you can just go and have a look at the officer there. I'm sorry. There's I blood coming down the back of his head. They, they tried to all try to rag me up. Calm down. Yeah, no, I'm, calm chilled. Down. I'm chilled. I'm chilled. I'm chilled. I'm not going to try and move anywhere. I'm not going to try and move anywhere. I promise you, I won't try and move anywhere. I'm not a dickhead. I'm not that... Just just ease it now. That's it. It's done. Yeah. Looks like the calming presence of Dad has had the desired effect. Do you know what? I don't know if I have looked at that. It's pathetic, that is. That is absolutely pathetic the way I run on. So it's just what it is now, mate. The penny appears to have dropped. So while they wait for the man's ride to arrive, Coops goes to check on Sarge. Is there another unit to drive you to hospital? Oh, have you got, have you got an ambulance? Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. We're in the area looking for this other incident, uh, looking for these other offenders, and then this lad is urinating up against this, this fence. He's walking down the street saying all sorts, uh, and in the end we've had to arrest him, and unfortunately, during, in that arrest, we end up going down to the floor and the, and the sergeant's banged his head and got an injury, and it's just, it's just totally unacceptable, really. Um, so he's been arrested for jumping disorderly and police assault. Um, uh, we'll get him away now, and the priority is now to get the sergeant some uh, medical attention. Got a nasty cut on the back of his head, and that's the priority, really. We didn't want to arrest him because we've got this other job we're dealing with. But now this, this lad has single-handedly taken the most of the cops on this tour group investigating this incident to deal with him and look after the sergeant who's now injured. After 20 minutes, there's still no sign of the ambulance. But Coops wants Sarge to be seen ASAP. So, I think whoever can drive, I think the priority is to get the sergeant down to hospital. I think if any of you lot can, one of you can do that. With the sarge safely on his way, attention turns back to the urinator, whose mood has swung again, and he's suddenly eager to cooperate. 
Might have found a bag of cocaine in my pocket. I'm not gonna lie. So we are gonna find something on you. Yeah, you are, yeah, yeah, yeah. million percent, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. So what are we gonna find? He's fessed up to having a bag of cocaine. If he's been on the sniff, it could explain why his mood's been swinging like a wrecking ball. Might be not on me. But even though he insists he's got some, you check my socks. Check everywhere. He could have fell out. His phone fell out when we were struggling check on the floor. You want to check. They find nothing. Nevertheless, he's off to the nick where he'll be able to sober up and make full use of the facilities. Weird in the street isn't a major issue. However, with the mixture of a group of family. Uh, drugs and alcohol, it almost creates the perfect platform for someone of that nature um, to turn kick off. And what's sad thing about that is that there's a police officer tonight who's now sat in hospital, possibly got concussion. It's very disappointing that his behaviour's resulted in someone to be injured. This chap ended up spending a heck of a lot more than a penny. It turned out the urinator was telling the truth as a thorough search reveals some cocaine. He was cautioned for possession of Class A and being drunk and disorderly. For assaulting a police officer, the court ordered him to pay over a thousand pounds in fines. The Sarge made a full recovery. Still to come. Is it edibles or a batch of home baking has a familiar whiff? We've been arrested on suspicion of possession of cannabis with intent to supply. Okay. Well, how do we? Everyone. Oh, no. You can't do that though. You can't do that. Mate, what's down your pants? Yeah. Nicking drug dealers used to be straightforward. How much is there, mate? Should be about an ounce there or something. Right. A bag of weed, a packet of powder. That's literally just dropped out of your pocket. And they were in cuffs quicker than you could say pee wits. I'm reporting you for possession of class A drugs. Yeah. But for the cops, a recent phenomenon has been leaving a nasty taste in the mouth. The rise of the cannabis edible. Uh, they are definitely coming increasingly more popular. We've had numerous sweets, cakes, cookies, all manner of sort of edible cannabis varieties. A lot of them, they come in bags which look like normal sweets. So that's the sort of problem is when, you know, you, people are buying them, leaving them around, and then suddenly, you know, kids can get hold of them, which obviously can be fatal. The city centre provides a fertile hunting ground for the knife crime team's war on drugs. Ken Tinley's back out again. His partner today is Adam Scotney. Their colleagues have spotted a black Ford suspected to be linked to the supply of cannabis. Hello, there, gents. Just stay there for us, mate. There's three lads in the Fiesta. Step out for us, mate. Adam's gone for the one in the back. Just pop your phone on the wall, mate. Uh-huh. Uh, is there anything on you that could hurt me or you? No, no. No, no weapons or anything like that? Nope. Cool. Is that the cannabis you've got? Yeah, yeah. OK, I'm just going to pop that on there, then, mate. Is that all you've got? Yeah, that's it. He says he's got nothing on him but a small bag of weed. Oh. He's so good, to you. And a sparkling set of false gnashes. Cool, come and have a seat in our car, we'll start sorting out the cannabis then. At times like this, it's always good to chew the fat. Jump in, pal. Is it edibles or...? It's just a bit of cannabis. Yeah, edible cannabis or cannabis you smoke. Good, yeah, yeah. OK, you've been arrested before? No, sad. Meanwhile, Ken's been having a rummage in the Fiesta. Whatever these snacks are, they're probably not part of your five a day. Mate, off your phone. Off your phone. Wait, wait, Give me your phone. I can be on my phone. Give me your phone. Why can't I be on because my phone? Because you've been arrested, mate. Why am I being arrested? You've been arrested on suspicion of possession of cannabis what? with intent to supply, OK? What are you on about? You don't have to say anything, me? mate. Why, all why, of why everyone. Why being arrested? Everyone. What? Well, how do we? Everyone. No, you can't do that, though. You can't do that. No. Yes, mate. You but can't do Diesel. that. You're in the kitchen. Relax yourself. Why, why you're under you, arrest. Why can you do right. that? It doesn't make no sense. I've walked up to the car and I'm being arrested. So You've got in the car, which is a quantity of drugs you believe that are for onward supply, and we suspect you were in the car before. The lad's not best pleased. Is this legal? But there's more than enough evidence in the motor to warrant a trip to the Nick. 
there's a quantity of cannabis in the boot of that car, OK? Because of that, all of you are being arrested for possession of cannabis with intent to supply. The flapjacks have been homemade, but which one of these three lads is this week's star baker remains unclear. It's like the new craze is cannabis edibles, alternative ways of taking cannabis. Obviously, they haven't got this, uh, this carrier bag in the boot as well, which we can see is, is full of the same items, again, which we all suspect contains cannabis. The three people in the car when we've approached it, so all three of them are going to be under arrest on suspicion of that offence, whilst we obviously carry out some initial investigation. Edible cannabis is big business on the street. Last year, cops in Yorkshire seized £300,000 worth of edibles in a single raid. Today's goodie bag may not be on that scale, but it still requires further investigation. So while the three lads are booked in, Ken takes a moment to inspect the goods. The reality is that it's going to be cannabis that's been cooked in and amongst the recipe to produce this and it's still classified as a Class B controlled drug and it seems to be what is essentially some homemade baking with the ability to shrink wrap it themselves. So given the amount that's there, it's going to have been for, for onward supply. So that's, that's where we're at, that's what the aim of the investigation is now, to, uh, to ascertain who was in possession of this and what, and what their intent was really. Meanwhile, a further search of the lad Adam has nicked turned up something else that's piqued the team's curiosity. A handful of electronic key fobs. I'll take it. Police suspect the keys are linked to a housing block near to where the stop took place earlier on. We're just gonna have a look around and see what sort of um, what sort of gates the fobs work on and see if we can try and locate an address that potentially these lads have been at just before they've been arrested. Uh, and then carry out some searches and see what we can find there. The technology may be modern. <sighs> but this is good old-fashioned police work. Someone just opened. Close it again. And their tenacity has paid off. Yeah, press it again. <laughs> it's opened a parking garage across the street. <laughs> the next fob they've got features a Mercedes logo. So to flash that Mercedes fob to let open something. Surely not. Have you got it? <laughs> if only all police work was that simple. Because he's been arrested, essentially, it will be a Section 18 search on the car. So we need to wait for someone to make contact with the inspector in custody for the search to be authorised. And then as soon as it's authorised, we can go in and just make sure everything's legal then. And then if we find anything in there, it, it's, it's good. Checks have revealed the lad Adam arrested is the name driver on the Merck's insurance. Unfortunately, when the team finally get the green light... You've been through the middle? Yeah. They find nothing suspicious. However, later that night, they searched three properties connected to all three of the suspects. Yeah, that's there. Yeah. yeah. They find more edibles and a suspiciously weighty piggy bank, so they take it back to the Nick to crack it open. Oh, yeah. This oh, like a trainee bricklayer with the council. Yeah. And he's got probably, what, a grand's worth of cash in a box in his bedroom. It just doesn't quite add up. They've also retrieved several items of designer gear. But most revealing of all is what Joe's just found. Managed to unlock one of the phones, um, had a look at a few messages. There's quite a few on there. When he was stopped, he had a blue Skoda with him, which is registered and short to him on the messages. He's saying that he's, he's there waiting for them in a blue Skoda. There's photos and videos of him. So, yeah, there's quite a lot of evidence on the phone. The lads from the Fiesta have been released under investigation for being concerned in the supply of Class B drugs. The investigation into the suspected cannabis edibles continues. Guess that's how the cookie crumbles. And police interceptors returns next Wednesday at 8.
taking in Spain's most beautiful cities aboard the luxurious Al Andalus train. Join us for a world's most scenic railway journey new Friday at 8. Coming up, Jody finds herself getting even deeper into trouble as chilling original drama Witness Number 3 continues brand new next. Oh, police! Come to the door. You come to no harm. Shots fired. Crime never sleeps. Taser thinks. But neither. Stand still. Do the cops. <laughs> Battling on the front line. Taser! Taser! Are Nottinghamshire's finest. Stop after impact. Highly trained pursuit drivers. <laughs> Specialists in entry. <laughs> Search. Four ounces of cannabis. Rapid response firearms officers. On police! Show yourself now! Please for your dog stop, stop! And the crime stopping force <laughs> Look at my arm. of the dog unit. <laughs> Get down on the floor! <laughs> Wherever the battle takes them, they'll never back down. <laughs> because come at the hour. Yeah, that's we've still got him. Up on the back wheel, off side of the road. Doing, 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 doing. At the interceptors. Where are you from? Leeds. Leeds. Don't come to Nottingham again, will you? Coming up. He is uh, making contact with our vehicles. One of the most epic car chases in interceptor history. Cracking a suspected crack safe. White rocks. Bingo. And things that go pop in the night. Think they're successful. It's a slow shift in the unmarked 3 Series for John Lee and Dan Butler. Smooth and progressive, if you don't mind, Daniel. So I'm not too with an automatic gun. <laughs> but things are about to change gear. Oh, nice. There's a clone Toyota Avensis that's just come into Nottinghamshire from uh, from Yorkshire. It's a fair hike to the Yorkshire border. We're just going to make the ground up half. You've travelled normal road speed up there. You're going to be 50 minutes, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. But Dan doesn't do normal speeds. On quiet roads, he's trained to top a ton. It's dead quiet, isn't it? <laughs> While his partner... Check for me. Uh, we'll be up there shortly. Plots the fastest route to the cloned car. That clone has just done the A60 Langold northbound. John's been on the force for nearly two decades. He's ex-military and a master map reader. A634 Blythe Road. Who's led them straight to the cloned car. Well, there it is. Uh... Yeah, I've got it. Got that cloned Toyota. We are B6045 Bortry Road towards Blythe Services. Guiding in the T Pack units, they tail the Toyota in the unmarked. It's testing us. They don't want to spook him into making a break for it. We'll try and give him loads of space now, yeah. John. Yeah. Where's everybody else then? We are Multiple units are racing to intercept. Yeah, we are travelling towards it. Including Macca at the wheel of a 155 mile per hour Skoda with rookie Mike Leesk, who's in for the ride of his life. Can we contact uh, 10, see if they've got any possibility of a stinger at that location? A stinger team's racing from the other direction. I'm going to head towards Bad Worst and see if I can intercept. To take out the Toyota's tyres if the driver runs. Stingers on When we get suitable vehicles, we'll go for a preemptive three-car box. That's the speed. We're 
we've got near side indication that it is off, off, off. How many's in it? There's definitely somebody in the back. There's definitely somebody in the front. Attention. And it does appear to be two, maybe three up. The race is on for reinforcements. No four south on the A1, please. South. And Mike has his hands full navigating at these speeds. Right or left, you're going right onto right route. Well, it's either way, really. But I think he is aware of our presence now. Things are heating up, particularly for the rookie. This is where you've got to earn your money, mate. This is the car, this is the one, this is the job of the night. No pressure, Mike. Why am I going towards the A1 this way? Yeah, you can go right uh, onto High Street and the A1's here. Yeah. They've arrived. Oh, this is the off slip. But at the wrong side of the A1. There's a diversion because it's closed. I want to get A1 southbound directions. Meanwhile, Dan and John have lit up the Avensis. We have uh, now illuminated the lights. The vehicle is failing to stop. Right. And just off the A1, the pursuit is on. Speed 7-0 is on the wrong side of the carriageway. You're just coming off the A1 now behind you, John. Mike's got Macca back on track and their Skoda arrives to join the pursuit. Yeah, just got your ear rates. Two in the stick. We're approaching a humpback bridge. Traffic lights are on red. It is up to high risk. Stand by. The bad guy sails through at 75. <laughs> Heading for a short, sharp shock at Barnbury Moor Junction. I'm ahead of you. I'm at the junction. Understand, Stinger. Understand, Stinger. Stand by. Spikes out. We're just approaching the junction for Barnby Moor. Three, two, one. Boom. Stinger! <laughs> With the Stinger team hidden off road, the runaway races over spikes that sting both near side tyres. Dan has a split second to react, while Team Stinger takes a bow in the hedgerow. Was the Sting successful? The Sting's very successful. Close up, Macca. Macca, can you close up? Closing up. Easier said than done at these speeds. Well, this ought to be the end game. I think he has got. Uh, Near side tyres uh, deflated. But the cloned clown carries on weaving all over the road. If we with you, John. Macca and Mike have closed up and get a closer look. There's two in there, one male, female. Their Skoda gets ahead of the target, but not for long. This is proper wacky races in the back of beyond. Trying to get the box on high risk. High risk, and we got uh, any other teapot mobiles in the vicinity. Even with flat tyres, he's a tall order for two cop cars. Macca makes another dash for the high ground. But can't hold it. Uh, OK, yeah, but what do we, what yeah, do, no, we do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you stop by for impact? Oh. Shell shocked, Macca gives way to Dan's Beamer. Rampers, he? This guy is off the charts dangerous. Redford Road and HE is uh, making contact with uh, our vehicles. Where's everyone else? They need cavalry, fast. There's no other road users. Yeah. Still no other road users. But as they approach civilization, One opposer. Worrying signs of life. 
We've got one vehicle towards. Stand by. The stakes have been raised. Given his driving, if traffic gets heavier, they may be forced to abort. Well, he's on the opposing side of the carriageway. Incoming. He has lost the tyre. Stand by. Incoming again. Another tyre gone. He's running out of rubber, and they really don't want to let him go. Box on here. Oh, no, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Gonna be any minute now. Yeah. Just stay stand by, Macca. It's going to be any minute now. Stand by, Macca. The thrash to Vences is making a right racket. That's that. That's his wheel. On his rims now. And H, the vehicle is now on its rims. Uh, stand by. Dan goes for the overtake. But the bad guy slams the door. Dan, do you want me to go in front? Because he's already smashed the back of his car. This is high stakes stuff. Yes, yes. And as Makaskoda switches to lead the pursuit. Yeah, it's just entered blind. Stand by. They're on borrowed time to box him in on safe roads. But they can't stop him. As Macca cuts inside, the runaway mounts the footpath, almost loses it, and misses an oncoming car by a coat of paint. They need to end this before someone's seriously hurt. Now it is. We need to stop this car Interceptors are embroiled in the mother of all pursuits. She is uh, making contact with uh, our vehicles. Dan's Beamer and Maka Skoda are all over a clone Toyota Avensis. Stinger! Oh, <laughs> That's already been hit by a Stinger. But on rims, shooting sparks into the night. On his rims now. The bad guy refuses to give an inch. And somehow, he's still on the road. Jeez, we need to stop this car quickly. They can't afford to wait for the cavalry. This calls for death-defying teamwork. Dan cuts inside again. A tactical nudge from his Beamer spins the Toyota sideways as Macca flies by and bravely blocks its escape. It's a hell of a hit, but they've stopped him. Driver's in the back seat. In one last dodgy manoeuvre, the driver leaps in the back, hoping to deny causing tonight's life-threatening chaos. It won't work, and nor will locking the car. You're the driver! You've changed seats! Get out! Get out! The driver's through the back window and into cuffs. He's a driver, he's just changed seats. Give me up! Dad's gone, Dad's gone. The passengers soon follow suit, and the cavalry has materialised at last. The under arrest, dangerous driving, failed to stop. I think Dan said he's jumped in the back. And breathe. This vehicle has now been stopped. It has rammed uh, numerous police vehicles and caused uh, a fair bit of damage. This guy is definitely the driver. He jumped out of the driver's seat as we came to a stop. The driver's in the back seat. Back seat driver is only 18. Have you got a full licence? No, no, banned. You banned? And he's been disqualified once already. No, that lad. No, he did give his name a minute ago. I just did give me name to that line, mate. No fuck like a shot. It's all on camera. I, I said, give me name. if you listen, I said you did give the name. Oh, oh no. Did you calm yourself down again. Yeah, I'm just saying. Bring That's it down right. a bit. It's all done now, isn't it? Yeah, can you not snap the hands then? I'm not At snapping the hands, I've got all the hands. Can we sit me in the back of the car, mate? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All he's got is he's a disqualified driver with no insurance. He's passed the breath test, passed the drug wipe. 
The car's been searched, there's nothing in it. It's on false plates, but it's not stolen. It just shows you the, the massive risks people are prepared to take ju just for, for being a disqualified driver. Miraculously, there were no serious injuries. Just a baptism of fire for rookie Mike and a headache for Macca. I blocked him in there and he's impacted the side of the car. So the side airbag's gone off, but that's hit me in the face because I was looking out the window. So, bit of a sore but I'm all right. They're made of stern stuff in knots. Yeah, thick head from Mansfield. No further action was taken against the passengers in the Toyota and no charges made regarding the allegations of cloned plates. However, the 18-year-old who hopped from the hot seat pleaded guilty to dangerous driving, driving whilst disqualified and no insurance. He got a nine-month suspended sentence and a 15-month ban, plus a 20-day rehab programme and three-month curfew under electronic tag. He was sentenced on his 19th birthday, a date he was lucky to see. I'll tell you what, if it had not been stung, he would have killed someone. Police officer with a taser! Work as an interceptor for a few years and you get to know your enemy. What's your name? James. James. No, it's not, it's Joshua. And? I think he's going to try and run, you know. Your enemy's M.O. Run up, run up! He's running, Brown, he's running, he's running! Run, 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 run! Which today... Can you tell whether it's one or two up? Is he going to do musical chairs? Is musical chairs. <laughs> On one occasion we got behind him, but his missus was in the front passenger seat and he gave himself just enough distance that they could swap seats. Dan and Matt are after a disqualified driver, reportedly linked to drugs. By the time Cox got to the driver's door, she was sat in the driver's seat. They're wise to the lad's games. They just need to catch him playing them. We'd be fully expectant of a failed stop with him if he was in the car on his own. If his missus is in the car, he's more likely to try that trick again and swap seats before we can get to the driver's door. Matt nicked an armed gunman in a burning building and got commended by the Queen. But less about the British throne... Uh, a black Audi A1. More about musical chairs in a German motor. It will be behind it. Just go to it and get it on quickly, I think. The disqualified driver's at the wheel. As he pulls into a retail park... Down the side of the Costa drive through. Dan keeps tight, so Matt can reach the chair before the music stops. So you running toes on. Who's it going to be? Vehicle stopped. No one. Hey, mate, you're disqualified, aren't you? Me? Mr and Mrs Suspect are both in the passenger seat. Yeah. Watch his hand. I ain't got nothing. That's that, Betty. He's been detained and the car's going to be seized. All right. Seized for what, though? For you driving without insurance or a licence, that's why. Well, I haven't. You, we've just seen you drive, buddy. We've just seen you, mate. You've just seen you. You passed straight across the top of our car. Listen, I'm yeah. not going to run, that's I'm fine. not going to argue, that's no nothing. Wicked. Wicked. No, that's fine. I'm We're not getting good. Nicked. That's all I want to know. Are you going to get arrested? Yeah. At this present moment of time, what we've got in front of us, no, you're not getting arrested. Unless I find something else in your car. Is there anything else that we need to be aware of when you're in the car, buddy? What? Is there anything else we need to be aware of on you or in the car? Any drugs, weapons, anything? Just my weed, mate. Just a bit of weed? Was well, a lot? A little bit? Just what I smoke. Just what you smoke? Yeah. All right, buddy, that's sand. If it's just a little bit of personal use, again, you ain't getting nicked, buddy. Like I said to you, I got my Rizla, my weed in there. The suspect's on best behaviour. As they search him... So just going to take your hat off, just check under your hat, buddy, all right? We can do that. Yeah, and the lip. Around yeah, yeah, I've got it, mate. <laughs> nice I'm one, dude. You, man. And the Audi. That boot lift lifts up as well, mate. Yeah, I've got it, buddy, yeah. <laughs> What's with the baseball bat? My puppet. Is your what? My puppet. Are you puppet? You beat what you beat it with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, what it is, no, I'll just get on the grass, I'll put it down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll go like that and just chase it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no drugs are found beyond the personal he's already owned up to, but twin phones arouse suspicion. He's got cannabis on the phones. They're gonna have to come in for Pewits, aren't they? Yeah. Mate, you're under arrest. What? Okay, possession with intent to supply cannabis. 
Obviously, you drive without insurance and you DQ, aren't you, as well? So disqualify yeah. driving. At this time, I'm arresting you on suspicion of possession, with intent, supply, class B drugs. She has nothing to do with it. No, she's coming in as well, and then you'll both have an interview. Parting may be such sweet sorrow, but when dealing is suspected, romance is dead. You lot are going to try and all this with me. I just want to know that she's all right, innit? Me, she's, 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 she's got the dog. Yeah, but I know, I know, I know, but I'm on about releasing. You'll be released at the same time, so you'll still go home with the mate, so there's no issues there. Right, jump in, mate, let's get going. A final fond farewell. Love you, yeah. <sighs> and Romeo and Juliet ride off to the Bridewell. Meanwhile, interceptors want to search their home. Yes, yes. The star-crossed lovers gave separate addresses, but Intel suggests they actually live together somewhere else. We've now got a bit of information to suggest they might be in a flat complex not too far from here, um, but we don't have a house number. What they do have is a gate fob and two matching door keys. So it's here somewhere. How many doors have we got to try keys in? If they can find the correct door, they should get authority for a Section 18 search. Open. Well, the door's open. All right, okay, cool. Open Sesame, but only to the communal stairwell. Yeah, what from the stairwell? Well, do we not know which flat it is then? Does it key fit the door? No. Got it. Ten four. we've got the address. Get the 18 authorised then. Supplied with the exact address, the inspector soon authorises entry. Police! Police officer with a taser, stay where you are. A quick sweep reveals nobody's home. We've got a couple of lock knives there straight away. And it doesn't take long to discover the suspect's baseball bat chasing puppy. Oh, hello. <laughs> More class B. More cannabis. And things not found in your average kitchen. Well, the cash, they're fresh there. Are they, are they all... Oh, bloody hell, they're fed the fake. As well as the secret stash of fake oh. money, there are keys to a Ford Fiesta. Oh, safe key. I've got one here. With twin safes in the boot. In the first safe, on the key that we've taken off them, opens this safe, and inside is a large amount of Class A bundles. And in the other, a lot more Class A. Which are white rocks. Bingo. Wow. So big hole. Yeah. A lot of Class A. Sarge. Bingo indeed. So we've got to the list as well. Yeah. Could have five, six, upwards thousands of pounds in there. They, in a million years, probably didn't expect us to find this. Mr. Musical Chairs was found guilty of driving whilst disqualified and no insurance. He got fines totalling £213, a 12-month ban, 40 hours unpaid work and an eight-week suspended sentence. Meanwhile, the haul from a locked safe in a locked car, open with keys from a locked flat behind a locked gate, has been sent to the lab for testing. Romeo and Juliet are under investigation for possession with intent to supply. If convicted, they could be locked up. Oh, Coming up, why would you put that in? gender studies with Paul Charlesworth. I'm a woman, but why are you talking about it? doesn't matter if you're a woman, does it? It's irrelevant if, if what your gender is, is it? You... Boxing lessons with Sergeant Carrington. Close up, box on. And detention with Mr. Broughton. Today, if you're going to behave like this, you're going to end up at a police station, you're going to end up in a cell, and worst case scenario, if you're seriously interested in them, you're going to end up probably going to prison. A blue Audi A3 been confirmed as a cloned vehicle. Jim and Lewis are part of a team hoping to stop a cloned Audi. Its false plate could hide a no insurance or some meaty bad guy activity. We're going to catch this car, mate. We're going to catch it. We're going to teeth pack it. We're going to catch a bad guy. 
Jim didn't make Sergeant without an optimistic outlook, and the Sarge has high hopes of a major bust. But Lewis has looked into his crystal ball and predicts something small time. I think it's just going to be an insurance job. The ultimate optimist, aren't you? I just think it is, mate. Yeah. We're going to hold at the garden centre at the Bard Hills RA. I think 24, 25, and 26 need to be covered. 2 3. We are at junction 24. We'll stay here. Cars are plotting up across the area. Blue, three door, Audi A3. But it's the optimist who spots it first. It's in lane one. Contact, contact with the subject vehicle. It's a female driver. Reinforcements are en route, including Paul and Rich. Got you in sight with about four vehicles behind. Swiftly followed by Clarkey. Got three in the stick. There's now three in the stick. The driver cuts in front of a van. Yeah, that's a strange reaction, that is. It's made a really strange move. Now you come into the straight on. So we might need to get up to it sooner rather than later. Oh, mate, that's holding traffic now. No time like the present. Close up, box on. Take the keys out. Take the keys out. That's the way to do it. Open the door. Open the door now. There are two passengers. One of them, a baby. There's a baby in the car. Can you get the camera away? Or can you get the camera away? The camera is the least of your issues right now. So forget the camera. We'll deal with what we've stopped you for. If you what don't mind getting out, then? this car is believed to be on false plates. The car's on false plates? No, it's not. I just bought the car. Have you? OK, we'll sort it. Well, why would you come like this? Because people in on car in cars but on I false don't place, care. Why would you come like things? this? Like I'm a drug dealer or you a gun in I don't know you, do you? For all I know. I'm a woman, but why are you coming like this? It doesn't matter like if you're a woman, does it? On the it's irrelevant and then bring if you're a woman. So that, that's, that's irrelevant. It's irrelevant if is it, what your gender you, is, is it? Have you even got permission for right. you to put me on camera? Come over on the side. No, why am I going to come on the side when you've got a camera in my face? If you like, I can put you in handcuffs and we can take you to the side of the camera Or you can walk round. Both driver and passenger aren't making it easy. When I'm saying come in and talk to me, I mean come in and talk to me. That means don't come down here, then. That means don't walk away from me or you'll end up in cuffs. Those number plates aren't for this car. Well, when I ask you sign, you sign, don't you? I think yeah, a piece of paper. When yeah, but that. By a car. But they didn't. Logbook. That won't have had this number plate on it. No, I didn't have a logbook with the car. It's not a bit of paper to sign. I'm in on a provisional license, and I was going to insure it with a what's it called? Provisional. You're not insured. Someone... It's all a bit of paper if you sign. So you're not insured, you haven't got a licence, and this is on false plates. But I haven't put it on false plates, that's what I'm saying to you. No insurance job, just as Lewis predicted, but that doesn't mean he's pleased about it. It's not great though, is it? You're only a kidney you haven't got a licence. Yeah, the reason we stopped you in the manner that we did is because, as far as we know, it's a car on false number plates, right? And we don't know what it could be, be, what it could be. That's the problem. It could be anything. Because if somebody decides to go steaming down here at yeah, 100 yeah, mile an hour, yeah. they could kill somebody like you with your kid, couldn't they? Yeah. She's no major crim, but carrying a kid in an uninsured car without a valid licence is still a no-no. Allegedly, she's bought it with the false number plates on. Could be true, could not be true. Uh, but either way, the false number plates have covered up the fact she's got no licence and no insurance. Uh, but certainly not master criminal of the century, I don't think. But Sergeant Optimist hasn't abandoned the major crime angle. I found a firearm. <laughs> well, you need to be careful, because this is the Huntsman Auto Scout SNA 79GB. It's still a crack shot. <laughs> don't tell Lewis. He's the best shot in the department, remember? Our legal team has asked us to point out that the Huntsman Auto Scale SNA79 GB is not a genuine firearm. <laughs> <laughs> and the driver's free to take it, along with the rest of her belongings, to the nearest taxi rank. All right, take her. At the wheels of a vehicle, she is qualified to drive. No further action was taken regarding the cloned plates, but Lady Audi awaits her day in court after receiving a traffic offence report for driving without a licence and no insurance. As to the outcome, only Mystic Lewis knows that. Lewis predicts. I predict. Put your hands on the tree. Put your hands on the tree. 
Interceptors take reports of guns deadly seriously. Stand still. Stand still. Hands up. Even in the hands of kids. We've had some information that one of you three's got a gun. Oh, no, it's a BB gun. Who are usually playing silly beggars with BB guns. You've got firearms cops here pointing guns at you. You could have ended up six feet under, mate, couldn't you? BBs fire metal or plastic balls. It's illegal to carry one in public. Parents will buy them with kids to play with in the garden, and then kids will think, oh, I'm going to take, start taking it out and play with my mates without thinking of the consequences. Because in their head, it's like, well, it's a toy. Kids are kids. They're not fully mature, and no. their decisions aren't always going to be the same decisions an adult would make. And, uh, yeah, they do make some pretty poor choices. The sun's shining in Sutton in Ashfield, but Phil Broughton's not here to catch rays. Yes, sir. There's been a report uh, of a 11-year-old uh, boy that's been uh, hit in the face or shot in the face with a BB gun. It's causing injury to his eye. They need to nab the culprits before someone else gets hurt. You know, one's uh, on a bike and the other one's uh, walking with them with some face coverings. And if anyone can find them, it's Phil. I've got a group of kids wandering around with a BB gun. Uh, and they put it in the bag that they were carrying. And allegedly one of them was on a bike and one of them was walking. Well, yeah, obviously, because you're all on bikes and you've got little bags. Have you got uh, any BB guns on you? Uh, no. No? Yeah, Definitely. So what's in his bags? Anything? I just have a phone. Do you have a phone? Cool. Just... But we did see a lad like, all the way down here. Some lads down here. Yeah. No worries. Phil's a master at snipping out lies, and there's a whiff of BS about their BB denial. Well, right, yeah, that looks like it's padded out with other BBs. No? Mm. Let's have a quick look inside it. Sorry, Just open it up for us. Come here. Yeah. Not gonna lie, we did find a vape, though, you want that. Oh, why are we a bit reluctant to open that? Let's have a look. Phil's head's not turned by their red herring flavoured vape. Let's have a look in that bag for us. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Why? Because yeah. I just want to make sure there's no gun in it. Well, we've got inside it. Yeah. Wait, please, officer. I'll be honest with you. We found the vape all the way Do you want that? Is that what it is? No, but we did find a vape if you want it. No, can you just open that for us? Come on, let's have a quick go. Oh dear. Come and take a seat in the back of my car. Well, we don't know what's going off yet, do we? Pass us that bag. I think I may have found your offender for this uh, BB job. I don't know if you've got another free unit, come and join us, because I'm with uh, four other kids, just need to grab details. I think the vape is the least of the uh, worries at the moment, yeah, isn't it? I just want to be clear with you, but we did find a vape. No worries. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we did. No, no, just hang fire a second for us. I've just got another cop coming down to us, so we'll just grab everybody's details, all right? That might be easier said than done. What's your name? Oh. Sorry? Oh. Why? Oh. Well, I need to know your details, don't I? Because one, you're walking around with a BB gun when we shouldn't really be walking around with a BB gun. And there's some allegation that you've been shooting people with. Wait, I've never shot someone. You haven't? No. Well, oh, we don't know yet. We're getting to the bottom of that. How old are you? Just turned 12. Just turned 12. Well, happy birthday for when it was. Reinforcements have arrived to deal with his mates. The lad who I've got in the back, he's got that black bag on him. He's got the blue BB gun in his oh, pocket. Yeah. He was on the back of a bike with him. Yeah. So I've not searched them all yet. I've asked them to turn the bags out. I you can't see anything. Sit. Yeah, we'll have a quick look. Just, just hang fire a second. And I've got money in this one. Yeah, no worries. Uh, it's just obviously he was with somebody at the time, so I just need to narrow down <laughs> who. I'm going to check everyone's details are OK, and then I'm just going to take you out the way down here and take a photograph of yourself and the bike, because I need to establish... You, yeah, but you were on it, weren't you? Yeah, but it's not Because I, I, I came gone. out to meet these... <laughs> <laughs> no, I swear, I, I, this Whose bike is it? It's that one. It's his bike, is it? 
basically what I think, yeah. Right. Is... Doesn't matter who you were on the bike at the time. So bring your bike over here so I can take a picture of it. Cool, thank you very much. If you want to do the same, bring your bike down here and stand here next to it. There we go. Photo shoot concluded. Cool, thank you very much. Phil fills them in. I'm just waiting for one of my colleagues going to speak to somebody who's alleged to have been hit by one of his BBs. And I just want to make sure who's involved and who's not involved. It's Green Bella Carver riding that orange bike. He had a number of face masks in his bag, didn't he? It was a green one. Oh, OK. The pavement four are free to go, for now. Take away from today, that if you're going to behave like this, you're going to end up at a police station, you're going to end up in a cell, and worst case scenario, if you're seriously injured somebody, you're going to end up probably going to prison. I've told you, I'll be honest, I just know these he's just, he's right. just Doesn't matter, you're, you're with somebody that's got a BB gun with them, all right? Now, I don't know whether or not he's been pointing it or it's one of you guys, but ultimately, it's wrong and it shouldn't be happening. So, from today, take away from our... Yeah, and just learn your lesson. Exactly, yeah. And I don't want to see you again, because I don't believe for one minute you didn't know you, he had that in his bag. Uh, we knew he had it. We knew Mm. Your parents will be getting a phone call, so we will be making them aware, so it's entirely up to you. They either find out from us or they find out from you. But one parent's ahead of the game. Oh, oh. Uh, can I speak to you, mate? Hello? I'm Mum. Hello, Mum. Mum's eager to hear the full story. If I leave here now, I'll be here about five minutes. And Phil aims to please. You've been in a police car before? No. No, oh, that's scary. I take it this one's yours? Yeah. Right. What's happened today is we've had a report of some kids uh, uh, in possession of a BB gun. Uh, they've shot a 11-year-old in the face with said BB gun, and it's hitting in the eye. Uh, okay. uh, we're just finding that out, so fingers crossed. So I need to stress to you, there's no way he should be wandering around the streets with a BB gun. He has been told that it's not allowed to. What are you going to do the rest of your day? Stay mum. Good. He's going to get a turn off from his mum. He's going to get interviewed by the police, which hopefully that will sink in. And those other kids that were with him, they're all going to get a, a, a chat with parents as well about it. No further action was taken against the boys on the pavement. The child shot in the face made a full recovery from minor bruises to their eye, and the matter was settled with an agreement between the victim's family and the family of the lad with the BB gun. As for any private punishment, mum's the word. Coming up. If you stand up, I'll put your handcuffs around the front. Can Jim contain the Houdini of handcuffs? No, what's I going can on? actually dislocate my thumb and get out of them. Well, don't do that. <laughs> Around 15 million people in the UK live in poverty. Millions turn to its 2,000 food banks to make ends meet. Others turn to crime. We're after um, an O2 plate Vauxhall combo van that's been involved in the shop theft this morning uh, on uh, Beeston Lane. Jim's back on patrol. This time with Dan Machin in an armed response vehicle. Did this van do the northbound camera? Sending the cream of the firearm squad to nick shoplifters is like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. But Jim and Dan are in the right place. Right there. At the right time. That's it. The Vauxhall van chaps, we've just seen Attention. it parked up. Uh, unaccompanied on St Paul's Avenue, facing out towards Radford Road. We've just overshot it to the end of St Paul's Avenue. We're just spinning back round. They need to lie in wait for the suspects to return, but their ARV has all the subtlety of a neon sign saying, "Run for it." It's just at the bottom of this road, facing out towards Radford Road. So they call in the Stealth Squad. So the plain ARV is just over the road at Asda. So I think they're going to stick themselves in a place where they can ob it and we're going to sit ourselves out of the way, see if we can wait for it to move off and then see if we can drop on it. It's moving off now, I think. So I think our van's on the move. Yeah, 
leaving an unmarked X5 to tail the van, Dan races to get behind them. We're with you now, mate. Yes, yes. But by the time he's tucked into the convoy, the suspects in the van have spotted their tail. They are aware looking in the mirrors. Uh, passenger anyway. Stop by. Run this is. They're expecting a decamp. Drop it on, drop it. So Jim exercises a cop's right to go seatbelt commando. Got your running shoes on. Standing by for that, mate. <laughs> Bit of a seatbelt round the back number. As the van pulls in, the Greyhound's out of the traps. But the hare's not running. Hello, love. The tactics going on is there no damage. No injury and the keys are out. You all right? Yeah. Um, Jim leaves the driver to other officers and takes the passenger. I'll cut to the chase. Mm. Um, the van's been seen in some circumstances this morning where I think they might have been involved in the shop theft. You wouldn't know about that, would you? No. No, good. How long have you been in the van then today? Um, Wait here, darling, because at the yeah, minute. No, can I, I well, at the right, minute, okay, I need sorry. to make sure yeah, that you've yeah, not been involved fine. in an offence, so just calm um, down. The driver's already in cuffs and the passenger is about to be. Darling, I'm just going to put you in handcuffs for a second. Yeah. You always mind your back for me? Yeah. I'm just detaining you at the minute for the purpose of a search, because we've got some information that says this van was involved in the theft, so I need to make sure that there's nothing in here that's stolen, nothing here that's going to hurt me or you, OK? So that's why you're in handcuffs. Mm -hmm. With the driver in one cop car and the passenger in another, Dan opens the van to find... I'll just get a little bit. ..another passenger. When have you got in there? Just off the green. OK. Yeah. Uh, we're looking for this car, or yeah. this van, no. who's involved in a theft. Who's sat in the back, then? I actually don't know his name. Interesting. So I'm detaining you at this time um, until we can rule you out. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no problem. Trust me, mate, I'm just going. If you have just got in it, we can check the CCTV. On the market. On the market? Just come off the market. Well, we can check that, can't we? Yeah, so you might be all right. Thank you. Stick yeah, down. Yeah. Cheers, Mark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> If he's only just got in it, he's all right. I think that's the guy. I'm just going to double check on this. Yeah. Leaving other cops to look into the CCTV, Dan looks into the van. Ah. The foil line bag to um, defeat security tags in shops so they don't set the alarms off at the, um, at the doors. There's a small hall in the back, but it's more happy shopper than hat and garden job. Stolen some quite basic items like the coffee, washed up liquid, meat. There's a clear description of the suspect who swiped the household staples, which is nothing like the guy from the back of the van. But and CCTV confirms he got in long after the thefts. Any questions? No, thank you very much. He's free to go, but the female passenger will remain in cuffs. If you stand up, I'll put your handcuffs around the front. So that's more comfortable right. for you, yeah. Am I right to just have a cigarette? Yeah, we'll sort you out. Cheers, They're not comfy, so. are they? It's I'll not, not, not put them on too tight. Actually, it's just whilst we're happy yeah, with the front of no, what's I gone off. I can actually dislocate my thumb and get out of them. Well, don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to, but have I'm a seat, then. I can. We'll sort you out with a cigarette shortly, all right? Yeah. Ms Houdini oh. has chosen not to use her powers to escape. In fact, she seems settled in for a chat. Oh, you've got a firearms license. I have. Oh. Guns and ting. Yeah. You actually, um, proper, proper guns as well. Mm-hmm. Well, that's Taser. That's good. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, oh, I didn't notice that one. Yeah, we're, we're all firearms cops. This is a bit, like, much of a much. I know what you're saying, but we've not come after just because we're armed cops. It just so happened that we were in this area ah! when this van's popped up. <laughs> they don't usually send the armed cops for shoplifters. It just so happens we're in the right place. Gun to my head, um... You're not a celebrity, don't worry. But you have starred in the movie of the day. CCTV and witnesses have identified, I think, somebody that pretty much fits your description. So you sort of... Like it goes from there. It wasn't me, because it was. It was like a couple of vanishes and a couple of... Um, right. ..tubs of bloody wash powder that I need because I can't wash my clothes, but they're... Okay. Desperate times, isn't it? And I've got no money. She's admitted to stealing the items... Get it? ..out of sheer desperation. Ooh. What an idiot.
No further action was taken against the driver of the van or the man found in the back. The female passenger was given a caution for theft. Hopefully in future, she'll reach out for help rather than helping herself. This is an opportunity for the end of everything. What else are you willing to sacrifice? Everything. Find the halo, win the war. Paramount Plus presents Halo tonight at 10 here on Channel 5. Can't wait. Next, new 999 Critical Condition.